the last show of 2022. How many more Boxing Day tests have we got left in us? David Warner, 200. Alex Carey, 111. Green, 3.15 million. We are talking IPO auction. We're talking Big Bash. We're talking Nisa Hattricks. We're talking Pakistan and New Zealand. That's all before we get into hashtag AskTGC. Matt Short is on the show, as is Alex Malcolm. My name is Ian Higgins. Sam Perry, how have you christmas Oh, as I always have. Uh, in a stupor of food and drink, uh, meat sweats, other sweats. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've taken it in as is my want, as is my entitlement as a waspish right. Australian male. Okay. And that includes regarding all the cricket as just another procession for our country, which only reflects well on us and nothing deeper. 100%. And if you have got the sweats yourself, jump into some Budgie Smugglers. That's budgiesmuggler.com.au as this show is always presented to you by and has done for many, many years. Pez, it's been 10 days uh, since um, we last convened on this here podcast. And in that time, finally, Don Bradman cancelled. Yeah, fuck Finally. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all happened in the space of 10 days. A bit has happened, but finally Bradman cancelled, okay? Tear down the statues. Um, why is Bradman cancelled, mate? Well, he's not, you know. <laughs> he's just not. He's not. Too good a stick. <laughs> he's too good a stick. Too many runs. So the, this this piece popped up from Bredig, uh, a friend of the show, Dan Bredig, Sydney Morning Herald, The Age, The Nine Papers. Uh, it was a, it was a good solid like Boxing Day read I think. All the good journalists they put something big out on Boxing Day because in Australia after Christmas Day like mm-hmm. after Christmas Day there's ten days of not knowing what day of the week it is mm-hmm. and you want to start your Boxing Day just with a good long uh, salacious read and bet and Brettig I was going to say bet rig but that would be a misspelling <laughs> of them have to say bet rig sick. Uh, <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a new online gambling forum. I think his name has, has been changed to Dan Bet three six five. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I think yeah. you'd go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Brady, Brady delivered this year, and it mm. was a story of, uh, of of Don Bradman writing to new prime minister in <clears> the what is it seventies, uh, Malcolm Fraser, upon the toppling of Gough Whitlam, a famous moment, um, a notorious moment in Australian political history, where the uh, the prime minister was. Uh, uh, dropped to twos. He's dropped to twos. He's <laughs> dropped to twos. Uh, <clears throat> and um, and it kind of showed Bradman's political proclivities, right? Which is, you know, yeah. surprise, surprise, good stick, skew selfish, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you <were laughs> Turns out, didn't give many throwdowns himself. <laughs> received a lot, yeah. didn't give out many. Yeah. Uh, the ratio of received to uh, uh, afforded. I thought it was. A, I thought it was a nice read from Brady. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, f- for me. Bradman's conservative. Well, yeah, yeah, like it, that's good. But but like some of the details, always bad at first. Some of the Very details, fun, fun to read. That's all good. Yeah, yeah. And then it was then it got it got funneled through the uh, the the culture wars. You know, Perfect. Like Adams getting in there, calling him a right wing nut job. That's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, throwing a few sources out there saying perhaps he wasn't the uh, you know because because Bradman's often lauded for his role in standing up to South African apartheid. And, right. and you know, Philip Adams, a couple of others, put some other source material out there that indicated otherwise. Right. You know, and that upset some people. Yeah. The deputy PM, Michael McCormack, said build more statues for Bradman because they're going to want to tear them down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and news.com.au actually put out a whole article of, yeah. of everyday Australians and leaders standing up. Leaders. St- Australian leaders who are standing up to this left-wing cancel culture, woke, you know, BLM, yeah. Fuck with uh, yeah. movement. Right. And I'm going through news.com.au and I'm like, yep, there's Mick McCormack. There's, he's out there. <laughs> <clears throat> there's Rita Panny uh, talking to Tina, someone or other from the from Vic State Labor Party. Well, State Labor, Vic State, uh, State yeah. Liberal Party. And, um, and then I see a tweet uh, that they've included from Ian Higgins. <laughs> 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 Something about what Bradman could have got away with if he averaged a hundred. <laughs> I just like that. I just like that. that uh, you know, news.com.au, the Daily Telegraph, they've claimed yeah. Dean Higgins as yeah. conservative media darling. <laughs> I finally, finally, you finally, yeah. I've been accepted. Yeah. We got your Ralph Lauren. I, uh, yeah, I can, I can see it actually. Well, they actually Good. sent this to me as a, as a, yeah. as a, as a, as a gift. Yeah, it's nice. uh, yeah. no, because I, I, you didn't tell me that this happened. I was like literally reading that story this morning. It's just going through like the the commentary online. I was like, hang on a second, yeah. that's me. I know yeah. that guy. I know that. Hang on a hey, very good looking bloke. Uh, uh, so I thought that was all pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's all, all pretty that's good. All good stuff. Hell of a way to start the festive season. Uh, and, you know, it, uh, how is it Friday? I don't know what this, this means yeah. for anyone. 
Um, anyway, yeah, before we get into Australia, South Africa, because there's, there's such a big conversation about what this all means for the future of the game, as, mm-hmm. as actually the whole uh, motif of this summer in many ways has been about, Pez, um, do you want to talk about the TV rights, which is sort of in the in the midst of uh, some... Uh, I suppose it's worth uh, worth providing some kind of update. The TV, the broadcast rights in Australian cricket are important because they basically pay for the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where most of the money comes from. There's other bits of money knocking yeah. around. You know, subs. You know, merchandise, subscription, yeah, subs, <laughs> subs to play grade cricket, etc. If yeah. you can pay them, depending on what grade you're in yeah. and your contribution to the club. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and... Yeah, there's uh, uh, the, the major TV networks are jockeying for the rights. Uh, there's been various soft deadlines placed and then passed in the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been a pretty curious or interesting um, set of articles by the, the News Corp papers that sort of indicate that they will be picking the TV, like the free to air partner that they'll be going with. There right. seems to be a pretty concerted effort to, um, to note that. Paramount and Channel 10, who have apparently um, offered the most money right. to Cricket Australia. Billion, apparently. 1.5 bill, the ability to play whatever they want on free-to-wear and then anything behind, you know, streamed on yeah. Paramount. Right. These are guys that have done the BBL really well in the past. News Corp yeah. made it pretty clear with a series of articles that uh, that not a lot of people watch Channel 10, so right. News Corp don't want to work with them, obviously. <laughs> yeah. uh, all reports are the CA might just play it safe this time around, but yeah. um, it's a pretty big call for CA. Like the, you mm. know, at the last the last TV rights deal, they went for News Corp. They went for Foxtel and yeah. Channel Seven, Seven yeah. and which was a big departure from where they were with Channel Nine. Apparently, they did that because they got up to a billion dollars. That gave a bit of a bonus to right. to Southo and yeah. Co. Southo and the boys, and um, <coughs> and now we have a bit of cricket behind the paywall. Yeah, and that same. So the same, the, the current rights holders offered the same amount of money. I understand one point one billion again. So, <clears throat> excuse me, four hundred billion less than ten in Paramount, but um, apparently, but uh, you, you apparently. know, the, you know, then you, you get then lots, of, lots of stuff sourcing through, like yeah, uh, yeah. like apparently seven put a deadline on accepting their offer a couple of days ago. Mm. Haven't heard anything since mm. since mm. and mm. since. Um, and links Africa. Um, which is what we, hope, what, uh, what we all received over Christmas. Um, so Australia, South Africa, we've been doing the dailies on that through YouTube. If you want the audio, exclusive audio for that, patreon.com forward slash great cricket, the more tests to come. And then of course, much more cricket in the near future where all the audio will live exclusively at patreon.com forward slash great cricketer. Um, <clears throat> okay, Australia, South Africa, the Boxing Day test, Australia win by an innings and 182 runs. Um, I think by now people know the scores. Um, Warner 200, Carey 111, Green 5 for 27, Nathan Lyon finishes equal most wickets for the year. From an Australian perspective, that's nice. Equal Rabada, though Rabada played a couple of less games. According to uh, Dan Cherney did a tweet yesterday and he said, since Hobart 2016, which is of course a very, um, uh, it was, <laughs> I was going to say it was in the deer. Mm. Uh, it was in the deer oh. moment in Australian cricket and in for South Africa where uh, um, enormous changes were made. So that was Hobart 2016. Since then, <clears throat> Australia has played 29 games uh, and they have lost four games in that time, all of them to India. Um, at home. At home. Yeah. Against everyone else, Australia's record is 23-0. and um, So <clears throat> what we're seeing here is like just a nice feeling of us, like they come out here, we fucking smash them and it's all good. But there is like just this deeper sense of like, what are we watching here, guys? Because I feel like... I feel like I'm watching the end of something. And that's something being uh, cricket as we know it in Australia. Maybe, maybe not test cricket per se, though it does feel a bit like it's the beginning and the end because this gap between um, South Africa and there's a bit of a, a misnomer where like they came out here as the second ranked team in the World Test Championship and they're, it's just junk. I mean, they've, they've, they've been so disappointing. And I don't think South Africa and Dean Elgo have shirked that um their performances so far, I think even after the press conference at uh, Boxing Day, Dean Algar said, you know, there was a hammering, call it call a spade a spade. The batting's, uh, you know, very very inexperienced. He himself has been uh, quite disappointing, I suppose. No runs so targeted. far. He's, he's he was targeted. So Australia really tried to get him out, mm. uh, which is what Australians, uh, good Australian teams do. But, mate, it just feels like an innings and 182 on the back of the West Indies and what the fucking dross that was served up there. The, the disparity between... You know, Australia, who is a, who does feel like it's a very, very good team, to be fair. And everyone else, it's just going to get wider and wider. And it's just it's just not competitive. Like, we're just not watching competitive games. Australia hasn't lost a session 
Uh, like Australia has not lost a session in any day's play so far this summer. South Africa, they don't play a three test series until 2026, 2027. That's, that's, that's how little test cricket they're going to play. So no, and that's when England, England go there, I think in 2026 and then Australia follow them in the beginning part of 2027, I believe. So until then, they're just doing too much series and it's barely any test cricket at all. So like, how are they going to get any better? <clears throat> so I factor all these things in and I thought, great for Green to get the Pfeiffer. Uh, and, you know, Warner, 200, your beauty. Keza, what's he like as a bloke? Ripper. So I'm, I'm all good to go here. Yeah, like, yeah, like, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one I don't know where I'm going, but I'm no, good to go. I, I just think... Uh, you know, never underestimate our nation's ability to bury our head in the sand and just enjoy our own little fucking bumfuck corner of the world. Oh, big time. And then just enjoy our own shit. Just a big emu, head in yeah. the sand. Can't, can't you. walk backwards. I, no backwards steps. On the, kangaroo on the, on, on <laughs> on the, the cut uh, arms. On the arms. Don't take a backward step. Yeah. You Not over it. Yeah. <laughs> you beauty. Pick my head up. Get back to work. Swans are on. You know, whatever. <laughs> you yeah, yeah. Do the pies pick up this year. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I agree. I agree. Mm. I don't. Uh, I don't understand. Um, like, I don't understand how cricket Australia don't have a huge strategic question on their hands, mm. and I don't get any sense that there's uh, any bold change coming up. Right. I mean, perhaps there is an argument that all of this is okay. Well, you know, to that maybe- point, the the uh, attendance at the MCG. Um, more people turned up to this game than last year's Boxing Day test. So last year's Boxing Day test only lasted three days because of Scott Boland took six for, of course. But after three days, there were like about 1,500 people more. More people turned up this year than they had the previous year. So like maybe the attendances are okay. Like that's, that's in a non-Ashes year. That's fucking pretty good. Mm. Adelaide Oval, more people, like 20,000 more people turned up at the Adelaide Oval than the last time West Indies were out here. So maybe in that sense, like mm. people are still interested and they want to go. Uh, but I wonder how often we can keep having these summers where like well i suppose i suppose what what are we trying to do here like we're trying mm. to get packed houses people loving the cricket mm-hmm. kids playing the game and it just being a really a really really popular thing and mm-hmm. so if that's what australians want and mm. more of them go and we just destroy oppositions mm. then the game's going really well mm. uh, i just think that there's a fair few signs out there that uh, it's you know that it's a it's a it's a leaky boat that's still afloat mm. you know uh, yeah. so especially like given that next summer as we've said many times before is pakistan west indies for five tests uh as in west indies for two again then pakistan for three though yeah, something's, <clears throat> you know it, it does feel like something's a little bit awry mm. but you know we all have pretty good um have a really good ability to just forget what happened most recently mm. and then get into our lives and then oh next summer's around okay like yeah. like like for example we can have all of these existential fears about what all of this means and what all the, the macro forces are mm-hmm. mitigating against test cricket. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> the next six months are probably the most exciting when it comes yeah. to Australian test cricket Big that time. I can remember. Big I time. mean, the, the Australian men's team have, after a long period of time, got themselves into a position where mm. they're playing extremely good cricket, they're led really mm-hmm. well, they are, they're calm, uh, they're mm. experienced. Uh, their, their time is now to see if they can ascend to fr- from a very, very good team to a great team. Yeah, I think it's going to be extremely difficult personally. Yeah, but we're going to be quite consumed with that over the next six months. I would have thought, you know, India and India, it doesn't get harder, no. and England's only just a bit behind that. I think yep. for Australian teams. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we can like. Well, everyone in cricket in Australia, we can kick the can down the road a little bit and worry about the next summer and that just when it comes. Mm. I think we can all agree that India must win the World Test Championship to keep Test cricket alive. They, they, they <laughs> yeah. must they must win that. And they otherwise, must keep Coley playing. They, they simply <laughs> must, otherwise no one's going to care about this at all. But, you know, this is the thing. Like, it's it's quite a – people might be listening going, it's a real, it's a real downer yeah. to put on several great performances. But it's yeah. – like, if you could follow, it's actually – it's actually out of respect for a lot of the Australian players and wanting to appreciate their performances that you say those things yeah. because there's just that sense, there's that slight asterisky sense mm. when you're just going like, 
Warner double, Green Pfeiffer, mm. Hedy smashing him, Carey hundred. Like every, you know, everyone's piling up milestones and stats. Yeah. Everyone's cashing in. Yeah. Like it's not separated from the fact that they've just played against a team that a country that beat us three series in a row right. leading up to this have just fallen off a cliff. Like yes. they, they actually are. That they're, they're symbiotic, those things. Yeah. You know, I want to appreciate Australian performances. Mm. And like, and you do. You can't take anything from what, away from those players or mm. as much as we're trying. Of course, yeah. Um, as is my great cricket wand. <clears throat> yeah. But uh, it, it, I, I also just don't get the sense that there is much of this conversation out there as well. Um, so Australia obviously go to India, and India have lost two games at home in the last decade. <laughs> 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 One of which was um, – <clears throat> when, when did O'Keefe get – 14 yeah, for or whatever. 2018. Yeah. And where was that? 20. It was in... Um, um, not Nagpur. It was in... Uh, no. Fuck. Oh. Smith got 100. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Shit. Where, wherever that was. So there was that game. And then England took a game off India. The first game of the series when they were there in 20, 2017. 20, 2017. Uh, where was Pune? Pune. 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 Um, and then... So England won a game. I think when Joe Rutt scored 200. I think, I think they... And then they got fucking completely axe up a tilt. Mm. So... Um, that's the only two games that India. That's I know they've lost only lost two games. So that must be the two games that they've lost in a decade. Um, so that's that's it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be pretty tough to <laughs> to do anything over there. But I think what's happened. We might take two spinners. Yeah, a couple, couple of spinners yeah. maybe. Yeah, um, I think that for Australia, like because of what England have done with their team in the last ten games, winning nine of those games. Even this, we'll talk about um, Pakistan and New Zealand later. But that's just another petering out draw of what we saw when Australia went there as well. Real grind, sl- absolute fucking slugfest in the field. Mm. Um, long old slog. Um, and as, so what have England done have made the upcoming Ashes fucking so exciting. Mm. Because all of a sudden, England are just this amazing mercurial team. I don't know if they're mercurial because they fucking just keep winning. Mm. Um, and it's exciting. There won't be too many four or five day... Uh, matches I wouldn't have thought but mm. um, you know and it's still I just still love the conversations like eh, against our boys okay yeah. and and that is just great Australian arrogance which I think will serve us well oh I think it's particularly exciting because it's the last test series of all time yeah <laughs> I forgot about that. I forgot that was the last one ever. It does yeah. feel like there's some finality to it. It's like Cummins, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the reincarnation of Richie Benno, the bowling captain, yeah. who's a class act with a great team around him. He's mm-hmm. got two mountains to try and ascend yeah. before we all just get bought by India. Yeah. Okay. You know? And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. so I think we should really enjoy these test series. I agree. Mm. I agree. So it is something to look forward to. Um, do we, we want to talk about the actual individual performances themselves? It was nice for Cam Green to get that five for 27. It was also yeah. nice to, for him to steal the limelight of Alex, Alex Carey's 100 by celebrating before Alex Carey. <laughs> um, so more questions about what he's like as a bloke. It's all about you, Greeny. Yeah. You know, right? Fucking couple of mil in the bank all of a sudden. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Dave Warner 200, celebrating after 200 and then going with cramps. He, he did that to do the Toyota leap. Uh, obviously, con- again, again, commercialism in cricket, is it a good thing? Um, they were. They- that, I think Warner's knock was, is very noteworthy given what was going on before. I mean, from a sporting perspective, yeah. that's, a, um, that's, that's a pretty strong riposte to a lot of the conversation that was happening. And, you know, it's a, it, was a, it was excellent reflection on him and his – sporting character mm. after two or three years of uh, pretty meagre returns by his standards to step up in that scenario and, and deliver one of his great innings, you know? And it, well, look, you can say for whatever you want to say about South Africa broadly, uh, it's the first, it was the first, uh, sorry, no, they bowled, they bowled first, even though people got up, people still seemed upset at, about that after mm. Australia won by an innings and 182 <laughs> runs. But, you know, Must you, be up there it, with one of the biggest wins ever. Yeah, but, that's right. Uh, no, yeah. the, the captain's pro climate change and that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, I hope they took the uh, carbon offset on the way uh, on the flight there. Otherwise, what's the point? Be perfect or fuck off. That's, right. that's the rule. Be perfect yeah, or fuck off. That's right. You can't argue. You can't argue against man-made anthropogenic climate change if you have one error in your carbon footprint. That's, a, that's the lesson. I'm if you fly to the things that I ent- yeah. no enjoy as entertainment, that's right. how or dare you, you? Or if you work with any partners that you have no control over, uh, then <laughs> now, um, yeah, I mean Warner's uh, like micro battle against guys like Rabada and Nokia and Janssen and stuff yep. means that that's a really excellent knock. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. I think reflects well on his 
his uh, his cricketing character in that situation. Um, so the SCG squad has been announced, and they brought in Agar and Renshaw. So um, that's a it's only a little bit complicated because Marcus Harris is already in the squad. Um, Bareback Morris is already in the squad. Raw the raw dog. The raw dog. Yeah, raw dog. Yeah. Um, and um, <laughs> Hazelwood <clears throat> has said he's fit for selection, so Hazelwood would definitely come in for Stark. So it'd be Stark and Green that can't play. Um, okay. And so Hazelwood will just he will just definitely come in for Stark. So you, when you say definitely, is like if you're Tony Dottermade, that's what you're doing, or you, you have spoken to Tony. <laughs> just it's just there's a lot of there's there's like there's strong reportage that that Morris is the like flight replacement for Stark. Doesn't make any sense to me. I know, but you, yeah. so you're saying that's what you would do? Yeah, Not, well, of course. Yeah, no, my own. Yeah. <laughs> what do I know? Mm. Fucking idiot off the internet. Mm. Um, but that's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, when you said it, definite, it has a meaning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and then it's what's going to happen with Cam Green at six. And uh, they obviously have Agar in the squad. They have, uh, no, Todd Murphy's not in the squad, nor is Swepson. So, so Agar is the second spinner. So, Lyon will play. So, it'll be Cummins, Hazelwood, Lyon, and Boland. And then who's the all rounder replacement? Ponting suggests an Aaron Hardy, who averages like 49 in Shield Cricket and like 27 with the ball. I think he was player of the Sheffield Shield final yeah, last year. he made year. 170 and took a bunch of poles. That's pretty good. Uh, he's not in the squad. He hasn't been called up, so um, so that's not happening. But uh, but it's just about whether they're going to replace some overs with green or they're going to go with an extra batter. What well, do, the, what, the, what's your tip? Oh, I don't – I mean – the spare like batters are both open. We don't know what the SCG wicket is doing these days, you know. Like 15 years ago it spun, hasn't for ages. Yeah. It's been a dog shit deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, say that as that my home wicket. It's the worst uh, wicket in Australia. Yeah, Nick Maddinson uh, sledged the shit out of it the other day, yeah. uh, you know, after a BBL game. Mm. I was listening to Gideon and Pete's podcast on the way of driving up um, mm-hmm. this morning and on cricket, etc. good cast. Uh, the, uh, apparently the... The curator has uh, like swapped decks that he's going to use in the last couple of days. Perfect, good. Rarely a good sign yeah. uh, for yeah. a deck. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's without knowing what the wicket is going to offer, it's pretty hard to say like what they're going to do. You know, but yeah, th- they've obviously got options for all of it. There's there's good reasons to include lots of guys. Yeah. South Africa is so broken. You know, we're all just after you know someone to fuck around with and a new toy. Definitely. I agree with you. I think it would be. Um, a near on disgrace if Josh Hazelwood is fit and overlooked for the raw dog, much as I'd love to see it. Oh, I want to see it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, so if Hazelwood's fit, he should play. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I would like, like, and then, then it comes down to what, what, what toy do you want to fuck around with? Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, it's Agar. I think he's a great cricketer. Agar's probably the, the best replacement in terms of some overs and some batting. Because obviously you're not getting any overs out of Marcus Harris or Renshaw. Well. I mean, yeah. if it turns a little bit, uh, then I think Agar is, has to be the second spinner in Definitely. India. You have to have give, a left-arm give, spinner. Yeah, yeah. With, his, with his angle. Mm. His, his batting will be important. He's a good fielder. He's a good cricketer, good character. Uh, so I'd like to see I, I'd like to see them bring Agar on more generally. I just think that angle mm. is incredible. and uh, that Incredible. It's a really good angle to bowl from. And um, It's just interesting if they do play an extra batter. The spare batters are Harris and Renshaw, and they're both obviously opening bats. Renshaw has batted down the order to as low as four. I've said no five, five maybe for yeah. Queensland. Okay, so then yeah. like, but then you know he's gonna, back opening now. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Now, Kawaja finished the year with more than a thousand runs in the calendar year. He's only second behind Joe Root, um, but he hasn't scored a hundred in this series in this summer. So um, he's on the verge of being dropped, in my opinion. Um, no, so what, series, I'm, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, um, mm. so I mean. Like Kawaja Warner, they're going to be your openers. Like they're going to move them around. Then obviously Smith, Marnus, three, four, and your five is Travis Head. So someone has to bat six. They're, they're, going, to move, they're going to move anyone else down that order. So you're going to mm. fit in like Marcus. I don't think Marcus has, has ever batted that low, has he? But he's like he's been always with a reserve batter. Mm. And then yeah, might move like Kerry up to six and then go Agar and play. Agar. Um, yeah, maybe four other bowlers. But as you say, the it, it's it's really it's a seven plus four or a six plus five right. question, and that will just depend on the wicket. And also, who gives a fuck? Because South Africa can't make over 200 runs. <laughs> I mean, there is that. There is mm-hmm. a do you need five bowls against this South African team? Uh, all right. We are about to speak to Alex Malcolm. So uh, here he is right now. Lucky enough to be joined in studio by Alex Malcolm from Crick Info. Alex, welcome back to TGC. 
Great to be back. Thanks for having me. Always good to come on when you guys get blue bombed by the big boys. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your presumption? Yeah. Pezza just fucking slides in a couple of hours before the show. All oh, right, no one's written back to him. Yeah. Nah, not, not at all. We, we, we wanted to get you on. You're only around the corner from where we are, and I can't say where that is. Um, <laughs> but... The SCG squad's just dropped. You're close to all this sort of gear, uh, in particular, sort of the, the high performance side of cricket and how the boys are actually going. We've been carrying on about some, you know, macro dumb shit for a while. Like, what, what do you what do you make of the squad vis a vis couple of injuries? Yeah, it's an interesting squad. It's, uh, I think Pat Cummins said yesterday that replacing Cameron Green is is one of the most difficult tasks now. And we've actually seen that with South Africa since Jacques Callis has left. The, the ability to balance the side is incredibly difficult. So that's their challenge. And they've decided they didn't have an all-rounder in Australian cricket who was a like-for-like like, uh, or who was ready to go yet. They've got sort of Aaron Hardy and mm. others, uh, Will Sutherland, someone who's had a pretty good season to date. Sean Abbott's bowling is probably better than his batting same as Michael Nisa. So... They had to go a different way, and they, they start talking about now the the structure. And uh, you've probably heard Andrew McDonald talk a lot about it in uh, T20 cricket, about the 6-5 v 7-4 structure. They actually take the same conversations into test cricket. So the same conversations are going to happen into this test match, depending on the surface. So they've brought in an extra batter, and Matt Renshaw is someone who they've had their eye on to bat in, in many different spots, and they like his ability to play against spin. He's obviously made a lot of improvements to his game since he came into test cricket a few years ago. So he provides a bit of flexibility, and then uh, with the ball, they brought in a second spinner. It's interesting. Ashton Agar is an interesting discussion point. He's a polarising figure in Australian cricket, I would say, amongst the fans. His record at first-class level is pretty mediocre overall, and there are first-class spinners in the country who have quite significantly better first-class records with the ball, but he does average 28 with the bat. He's got three first-class hundreds. So he provides um, some options there if they want to go to a 6-5 model. He could bat at seven. And Andrew McDonald said on record, actually on Wednesday before day three of the test match on SEN radio, that... It's not necessarily the second best spinner who will be picked. They wanted someone who would complement Lyon, which is really interesting because Todd mm. Murphy's obviously risen up the ranks just recently. Mm. Schwepson was the second spinner in four tests in Pakistan and Sri Lanka, but they want someone who can provide a bit more control. They're obviously looking at the likes of Akshar Patel and mm. Ravi Jadeja in India and thinking that left arm finger spin is going to be the way to go. Steve O'Keefe, friend of the show, had a had a pretty good series there in, <laughs> in 2017. So, uh, uh, so yeah, that, that's what they're looking at. But it, it's a really interesting discussion point, and it's one they're having inside the four walls, I think, about what their next best spin option is. Do you reckon for this specific squad it's 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 almost lesser because the series obviously won and whatever but it's less about winning this game right here and more about like what's to come India very front of mind but then maybe England after that as well so like because often guys get selected just to be in and around the group mm -hmm. except some of the guys like okay Renshaw hasn't been in and around the group for a while but but Agar has especially with the white ball program so it's like it's it's much less about trying to win this game right now SCG might be whatever but it's just going to be so different in England, like in Trent Bridge compared to, um, you know, Chennai. Like mm. they're going to be two different things. You're right. Uh, Pat Cummins was asked that last night, actually, at the press conference. He said it's a mix. They are looking right. towards those tours, particularly India, and, and Sydney's going to be the closest to India you're probably going to get in Australia. Right. It might not spin big. It could be slow and low. They, they don't know what it's going to look like. It's been very dry there this summer, although my colleague Andrew McGlashan was there the other night for the BBL game. That track wasn't particularly good, but he said the square looked a lot better than games previously this summer. The one shield game they had there was a low-scoring Bunsen burner. Chris Green took nine wickets for the oh, match. Yeah. Corey Roccaccioli took eight for Western Australia. So, yeah. And they're two right-arm off spinners. Right. Um, but you're right, it, it's a mix. But actually, if Australia win this game, they could lose 4-0 in yeah. India and still make the World Test Championship yeah. final. So winning this game is still a priority and they would want to pick the best side to win this game. But given the quality of the opposition, they probably could take some liberties if they wanted to, I would yeah. say. That's that's without trying to be unfair to South Africa. Just, just, just on that point, I, I think of the next five, if Australia win one, then I think they're guaranteed. I don't think no one can use – is that is that right? That's we, correct. We, if they win in Sydney, it's, it's they're in the final. They're in the final. No matter what happens. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> ben, do, you, do you think that's a priority for them, You know that, that matters to them? Yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely. Well, I do think what happened – in the 2021 final where they missed out on over rates, that, that burned them. Uh, they mm. even said on record, I think, I can't remember who it was, 
who said it. It might have been Pat himself. Mm. He said, oh, look, we, we didn't really think about it at the time, but then we watched New Zealand knock over India in a World Test Championship final in England, <laughs> and, and they were holding up the trophy. And we're thinking, gee whiz, we should have been there. We should have, we should have been a sniff for that and mm. should have probably – could have won the title. So – it, there's always a trophy to win in, in world cricket, isn't there? One every six months, it seems. And, and that's <laughs> yeah. the one they haven't got now. The T20 world title was the one they didn't have. They've got that in the cupboard now at, at Jollymont, so mm. they need the next one, which, yeah. Is, yeah. which is the World Test Championship final. You've got to be in it to win it. So yeah. getting there in the first place is the first starting point. Yeah. Can I, yeah. Can I ask, uh, I had a mate say to me yesterday, he was, re- he was just telling me about uh, like a – He's at a cricket club. He's telling me how to barbecue. He was at and uh, not a run out. And um, <laughs> <laughs> you can't say it now. I was at a barbecue. Was, I was at a barbecue <laughs> called Meat Sweats. Uh, and there was a, a more senior bloke who said to him, um, "Who my mate's a club coach?" And he said, "Like, how come if you played cricket?" 15 years ago or longer you're not entitled to an opinion anymore you know why does everything have to be talked about in terms of you know matchups or execution or this evolving language of the game and I, I, look I, I think I have an answer to that but my question is more like being close to the team and close to the high performance guys in Australian cricket like are they talking about cricket and the structure of sides and the way teams play the same way that the everyday club he talks about cricket or the way we might hear it on commentary yeah it's a it's a funny thing to discuss i think the core basis of cricket are still the same and mm. i think when they get out of them in the middle the simplification of the game and bringing distilling all of that data and all of those matchup discussions back to just watching the ball and executing mm. skills under pressure in that moment is what happens so they still play essentially in the moment the same way the old boys did mm. But the preparation and all of the discussions in the lead up are very different. The workload management with bowlers is a very, very different proposition. And the reason for that is they want to keep guys on the park. Previously, it was, you know, stress fractures happened, but they didn't manage them. Guys just had sore backs and they just bowled their way through it. And, and it took a long time to work out, okay, how can we keep these guys on the park for a long time? And Australia's seen the benefits now of of the way they've been able to manage Pat Cummins and Mitchell Stark to a lesser degree, Josh Hazelwood, because and Cameron Green, he's had four stress fractures before the age mm-hmm. of 20, and he's played every test match he's been available for since selection until now. He's gone down with a broken finger. and So there is um, method to the madness, I guess, in terms of all of that stuff. And then the matchups, yeah, it, it's interesting. There's a lot of different theories on it, but um, when you dig into the data and you – you set plans in place and they work. I think it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I think a lot of the guys who work within a high performance departments, either um, GMs of cricket or coaches now, they look to other sports and see the developments and the games that have been made in those sports and, and sort of look back at cricket and go, you know what, we're still a long way behind the cutting edge of that and where we can gain the one or two or three or 5%. So that's why... Uh, they talk in those terms and that's why they have gone that way. And I think, you know, there's still an element in cricket. We are stuck a little bit in the 90s in the way we view the game, but the rest of the world has moved on um, in terms of how they approach either in the Premier League or the NBA or the NFL or heaven forbid the AFL, but like the... Uh, <laughs> Listen to the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know you like the AFL. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't love the AFL. Yeah. I worked in, I yeah. worked covering the AFL yeah. and I do think it. I do think they overblow it at times. Mm. But um, cricket has been very insular, particularly in this country. And you guys talk about it a lot. Mm. If you haven't played 100 tests, you don't have any IP in the game. Well, mm. I'm not sure that's correct. <laughs> I'm not sure that's quite right. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a fascinating debate. But I, I do think... And I've said it to you guys off there. I do think um, cricketers at the top level and, and even the coaching staffs and the selection panels probably could bring people in a little bit more, could probably reveal a bit more of what's going on so people understand why it's happening. And and so we're not having a simple debate and looking at the numbers of Ashton Agar and go, well, why the hell is he being picked over Mitch Swepson because he's got – a worse average and a worse strike rate and a marginally better economy rate. Like that, none of that makes sense, but you, you, they would need to explain that better. I think they can explain that better. I don't know whether they will. It's not really incumbent upon them to do that. But I think for the overall product and the enjoyment of the game, given how much other people enjoy the ins and outs of following the NBA baseball or mm-hmm. NFL, you watch coverage of the NFL in the States and it is proper 
inside mm. inside NFL stuff. Mm. It's really nuffy stuff, but it's mm. interesting mm. and uh, and. And they value opinions from people that haven't necessarily played a hundred games or whatever. So, mm. yeah, it's an interesting debate. Mm. I'm just thinking about some like just Swepson, for instance. Now they invested so much in mm. Swepson, and for good reason because his record, especially bowling Queensland to victory in fourth mm. innings, was actually became really, really good. Um, and then you just look at it at the Test level. I suppose he got his chance in in the Asian tours this year, and it just didn't look that threatening you know for whatever reason just and then it just feels like a left arm spinner with that natural variation where some will turn and some won't and just lbw's fucking that's what they're playing for right mm. and i just wonder like i just feel like sometimes like swepson might be a guy who has this amazing first class career but then just at that next level just might not be that good and i actually wonder if like nisa might be a guy like that as well who like nisa's record in shield cricket and he scored first class mm. hundreds as well is like amazing Maybe it just won't quite step up to that level. But then there's other guys, maybe like a, an Aaron Hardy or a Will Sutherland, whose who's records are okay. And maybe those guys will elevate themselves. Like Cam Green's record, even per se, before he came into the test side, was like, it might be an exceptional, exceptional mm. circumstance because he's so young and amazing and, and two metres. Um, but, um, but, you know, I wonder like with, with those guys, like Swepson's career for Australia might already be he might have had his go already, which seems so unfair given his record. But there is a gap between some. Sometimes some guys are just really, really good first class players. And I want to even like even think about like Boland. When I watched Boland's first spell at the MCG last year, I was like, that just might be a good shield player. And then obviously he comes out because he was nervous. And it's like you're allowed to be nervous mm. when you first play for Australia. I've decided mm. you're allowed to be nervous. But like, do you know what I mean? There's, there's there's some guys who are like just very very good first class mm. cricketers in that gap in between well, can, I, can I just pick that up like just no. to, uh, yeah okay sweet I'll just go to sleep um, like uh, from what you're hearing obviously the right here and right now is what's important to the Australian test team because they've got, the, they've got India and they've got England and they've pretty much got their side you yeah. know there and thereabouts sorted out but what's what's next you know are you hearing like for, for in terms of Australian test players you know where are we at vis-a-vis Hazelwood, you know, where are we at mm. vis-a-vis the entire top order once Kawaja, Warner, um, Smith probably got a couple of years, mm. uh, start to step down? You know, what, do, do you think the side will, is going to look quite different in two or three years' time? I think it will, yeah, mm. particularly the, the top two. Mm. Uh, but they're, they're building reasonable depth across the board. Uh, I think the batting is probably the one question mark about how much talent is coming through, particularly younger talent. There's a lot of excitement about Campbell Kellaway in Victoria. Mm. Uh, Ashley Chandra Singh has done a good job in his first couple of short mm. games. So there, there's some excitement there, but they're a long way away. Those guys are 20 years of age. And mm. um, I mean, you reference Green. One of the one of the misconceptions about Green is, is his record in first-class cricket before he came in with a bat. I mean, he'd scored seven first-class hundreds, I think, okay. and, and, mm. and had made a 250 in Queensland. He was okay. averaging 50. 50 so 50, so. Yeah. Um, there, oh, it was flat that day. There, yeah, it, was, yeah, it, it was, was super <laughs> flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, a double, double down on what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'm just giving you four stats. Um, just to say. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I was flat. Yeah, uh, and I don't know, it's... <laughs> Yeah, it's, in, it's interesting. Uh, spin's probably the one question mark. They're very excited about Todd Murphy in Victoria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, whether they want to pick two off spinners in the same side is a question. Uh, it was interesting mm. listening to sort of the conversation from, I think it was Kerry O'Keefe on Fox this week, mm. about the fact that when Australia's two best spinners were leg spinners, which was Warren and McGill, they played them both. They didn't play the ball turning away, uh, mm. ball turning right, they call it turning right to left now and turning left to right. They, they played the two leg spinners. They're actually different bowlers in, in many ways, even yeah. though they bowled the same style. We were fucking around back then, really. I mean, we were, we were picking <laughs> Brett Lee because he was a toy for the yeah. team. That was something to look at. Yeah. And, and McGill as a second spinner took 200 mm. test wickets. That's yeah. not bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it, it, that's that's interesting. But uh, in, in wicket keeping, they've got some depth. Jimmy Pearson's probably someone yeah. who's third in line behind Josh Inglis, and he's got a super first-class record. Um and then the bowlers, there's there's a lot of depth there. I think Hazelwood, they, they understand with him that um, the conversations inside the walls, it seems now, are how difficult it is to play all three forms to mm. a very high level. Right. And everybody I talk to around Australian cricket is suggesting now, both players, coaches, management people, are thinking that from now on it's going to be incredibly hard for guys to play all three forms at international level or a high level. Mm-hmm. Um, David Warner might be sort of the last of last of the greats to do that from a batting perspective and mm. then bowling wise Mitch Stark hasn't been able to do it we've seen it with his T20 cricket that's sort of fallen away because his T20 skills is not something he's been working on but his mm. test match bowling the last 18 months has been sensational mm. Josh Hazelwood's gone the other way he's become yeah. the best T20 bowler in the world but because he hasn't been able to put in the workloads into his red ball game he's ripped his side twice in two years yeah 
and he's played three Red Bull games in in two years. Mm. Uh, so that's that's the challenge for guys now, and that's the big challenge for Cameron Green. That is that is his biggest issue is how is he going to manage playing all three forms at a high level and keeping up his batting and his bowling skills in all three forms because the divergence of formats is mm. starting to go so far apart. Mm. And Agar's a really good example of that as well. That They think he's capable. He's, he's, he's 30 years old and he's been playing first-class cricket for 10 years. They still see him as a project player, which yeah. is a bit baffling and it's an interesting conversation. But he's developed his T20 bowling so well that his skill set is he can bowl six different balls in an over but execute each delivery exactly how he wants and what guys in t20 cricket want to do is they want predictability as a batter so that they can hit him out of the park so he yep. bowls no step hits yeah. he'll bowl a 95k dart into middle and leg to force a drive down to long on where there's protection then yeah. he'll go slower and wider with a shorter length to force a cut shot which can only be hit to deep cover point mm. Then he'll bowl. One of the best balls in T20 cricket, the cut then, shot. The, cut, yeah. the ball for yeah. cut yeah. shots. Love it. Then yeah. he'll bowl, and then someone might line up the cut shot next, but he, he'll bowl another shorter ball, but it'll be a 102 or 105 Ks mm. hitting the top of the stumps, and it cramps guys up. This mm. is nuffy chat. So, yeah, yeah, it is yeah, nuffy yeah, chat. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. But he's gone for, and so that's a dot ball. He's gone for two or three, or he, he goes at sevens. Whereas Nathan Lyon has spent 10 years working and honing on his test craft. Yeah. And if you think about the six wickets he took at the Perth Stadium against the West Indies, all six of them were hitting the top of the stumps. They mm. were off breaks, mm. spinning into the top of the stumps. They were all the same length, but they were slightly different speeds. You yeah. know, 86, 91, 87, slightly different drops and variation and flight. And that's what Ashwin and Jadeja and Akshar all do in test mm. match. But only got to do that 6, 12, 18, 24, 30 balls. They've got to do it for 10, 15 overs mm. in spells. That's the difference, and, and Agar hasn't had the time because he's been a white ball player, same as Adam Zampa. They haven't had the time to develop those things because they've been working on their mm. T20 skills. So mm. that's the hard part, and it's a real challenge for these guys moving forward, and it's a serious conversation that, that's happening within the high-performance departments and the selection panel. Is How do we pick the best teams? How do we manage these guys? How do we get the best out of them given the time constraints on where they can work on their games mm. depending on the format that's coming up? Mm. Do they just have to work hard? Maybe, I mean, maybe, is that <laughs> yeah. one of, maybe yeah. that's one of yeah. the strategies and, and tactics. Well, you, you, am I right in thinking? Uh, <laughs> did you skip a Cam Green in in ones? I didn't captain him. Oh. No, but I played with him. Yeah, played with him. Played with him. And what would your advice be, just as a senior guy, to sort of work? Would you text him and sort of say, "Look, yeah. just front dog, just yeah, work yeah. hard, get, yeah. You know, yeah, elbow just, up, forward yeah. defence, all that stuff." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How much do you want it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. Uh, he hit more balls than anyone coming through as a teenager. He works as hard as anyone. Um, mm. But for him, it's a different kettle of fish. He's still working his game. It's incredible how good he is. He's still working his game out. Oh, it staggers me that people don't think he's he's that good. Like, literally, there was a stat out this week that he is the only player in the history of Test cricket after 18 tests under the age of 24 to have this many runs at an average of 34 with a bat and this many wickets at an average of 29 with a ball, apart from Ian Botham. Mm. Like, <laughs> sounds like Equinox stuff to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, but yeah. It's, yeah, well, that, that's no, true. It's, yeah, it's, it's not. It's, it's, it's a lot not. of runs, a lot of poles, and yeah. he's young. Yeah, and he's young. But you know, I, I always say, imagine if uh, social media was around when Chuck Callis was coming through. There was mm. a period there for uh, his first twenty or twenty-five Test matches where he was averaging over thirty with a ball and under mm. thirty with a bat. Mm. Yeah. People said, "Oh, he wouldn't. No good." Yeah. yeah. Move on. What's the What's the new next toy? Well, do, you, do you think? Uh, I mean, you said before that people are going to have to make decisions about what format they want to choose. You've played with Cam Green. Like, do you think he can? He'll be able to do whatever cricket he's put in front of him. And by the time he matures, it'll be sort of T five <laughs> yeah, cricket. Yeah, but but he, he did go to a good clip against India that time. So yeah, he, he did. Oh, he's he's capable of anything, uh, yeah. and it's scary how good he could be. I guess the question for him is just the workload. Like, is he prepared to play? 10 months a year and be on the road that whole time and working on his bowling and batting that whole time, you know. Do you reckon he's that kind of guy? Like, is he, is he like a cricket nuffy? He loves it. He loves playing. And, mm. and you could see how frustrated he was. I mean, one of the issues coming into this test summer, he'd faced 30 balls in the middle in a two-month stretch between the first week of October and the Adelaide test. And every, he comes out in Adelaide and couldn't hit it off the square and everyone's saying, well, what's going on with Cam? Well, he, he'd face 30 balls in the middle. Can't he was, play, drop him. Yeah. Can't play, Work drop loads. him. Mm. Exactly right. So, Aaron uh, Hardy, they're hitting him well. 100%. 100%. Um, <laughs> Something new. I mean, it, 
<laughs> yeah, it, he's he's 23. Just how good is he going to be at 28 if he stays fit? It's it's yeah. quite scary. But yeah. for him, it's going to be confidence. Whether he, for him, he needs. You can see now it's very frustrating. He's broken his finger now because he's just got five from 50. I reckon he would have gone nuts in Sydney. Yeah, um, but he, he he we saw it in the Ashes last year. That he got better the longer the series went. He mm. started getting into the series with the ball in Adelaide. Uh, he bowled well in Melbourne. Then he finally got a score in Sydney, and he played beautiful. Played his best innings of the series in in Hobart, and then the game stopped. Yeah. So uh, the same thing happened in Pakistan. He got better the longer the series went. Played his best innings in the hall. So um, yeah, it, that's that's his challenge. What about this? What about oh, we're getting into some nothing? Oh, I like, like, I'm actually no, into this. No, I was, yeah. I was just, it's not good for you. Listen, yeah. sorry about. That. No, no, it is. It's okay. a fuck, fuck yeah. the listeners. <laughs> What would you rather? Glory <laughs> <laughs> hole. Okay, what would what would the Australian team prefer? Winning the World Test Championship final if they make it, or winning the Ashes, Ashes. next year? Yeah, see, I think I think yeah. I'd prefer the Ashes, AFL but like grand final. Yeah, for me, because like because winning in a way Ashes is still the pinnacle. Because until India win the World Test Championship, then that becomes the biggest thing in cricket. But will but the Australian I, public even care about the World Test Championship final? Like, will we know that it's a thing? It's going to be on in June. I haven't seen the, the pictures of the AFL playing. that year. Yeah, yeah exactly. That, just seen for June. Wet at the Oval. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but I think I think the for me the uh, for me as a fan like pinnacle is a way Ashes winning it, and I don't. I, England will be favourites. They should be favourites, but. That to me is better than beating India at the Rose Bowl or whatever. Well, I think India and India, India at the Rose Bowl and the Ashes. If they if they do that, we're starting to talk about it. The greatest team, one of the greatest. Oh, teams if they, ever. Oh, if they, if they win all of it, oh fucking get out of here! See you later. Oh, I'm out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're shutting this podcast down. <laughs> yeah, 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 better yeah, than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah India is going to be a huge challenge, but England away. I think the most cricket fans would say that. I think, I think the team themselves. Oh, I don't know. I, honestly, it'd be an interesting one to ask. Uh, Pat Cummins, I would say. Because remember last, last Ashes, they took that squad of uh, 85 players over there and had the warm-up games. Right. And then like, there was, Coach missed out. <laughs> it, was, it was like 80 plays, 75, <laughs> they all nicked off. And it was yeah. like, but they had a good time. There was yeah. some barefoot circle stuff and yeah. like there's after sandpaper and all that kind of stuff. Earthing was what I'm talking about. But so like they, they really, really prepared for that, right? Then like Anderson only bowled four overs in the season, uh, in, in the whole series. Mm. Smith was Bradman. And it still finished 2-2. So it's mm, like, it's right. like I still that's find right. it like almost unbelievable that Australia could do it this time, given what England have done in the last mm. year. I mean, Any India, India for me is like, if that, if we finish 3 nil, uh, losing that 3 nil, that's a good result. If we get a draw somewhere, yeah. I don't know how, but uh, I don't know. But yeah, but, but I mean, World Test Championship, it's over two years and they probably deserve that to hold that, whatever the trophy is, but nah, New me. Zealand won it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah. See, it's like, so what's that? Yeah. See, is it good? Uh, yeah, the Ashes are interesting. They're, they were going to send an A squad. There was going to be an A series before the England uh, okay. uh, series. That has been cancelled. They'll send an extended squad, I think, in and around if they make that World Championship. World Test Championship final. Yeah. There are going to be some A games against New Zealand in April up in the northern states, and they're going to play with Dukes balls there. Okay. But the question will be Is that like wet season? So? Yeah. <laughs> Something like <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, more yeah. Up, up in town, England. Townsville and Cairns. <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, the only issue will be like some of the Ashes candidates will actually be allowed to go straight to England. So Nisa. The guys who might not go to India. Oh no, the guys who sorry, the guys who won't be in the IPL. So like the likes of Nisa, Renshaw, Harris, yeah, who are probably on the fringes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Even at Bancroft, who's, who's sort of started yeah. his name back up yeah. in lights. There's probably a few others. Um, yeah. So if um if if Australia don't make it, is because Sri Lanka's third at the moment. Would that mean it would be India Sri Lanka World Test Championship final? Because if, if uh, with respect, I'm, I'm not having that. I'm not having it. What's that? Oh, I'm not know, sure. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm probably sure. And yeah. sort of, oh, I mean, I'm not having this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you know? Do you know who would make it if Australia uh, don't make I think it? They're, I think they're close. It depends. There's quite a few games before that okay. as well. Okay. But I, it, basically, if Australia win this week, if yeah. they win uh, next week in Sydney, yes. yeah, they're in. They're in. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I think India are almost banked on going there as well, uh, yeah. provided they at least win one or two in, in yeah, India. Okay. So, okay. And yeah. then it's pretty much settled. So, right. yeah, I mean, it, it'll be a, it's going to be a great couple of months there either side of the IPL four tests in India a world test championship Mm, final Australia England in sort of conditions that are probably going to favour Australia a bit more than India Mm. and then the Ashes against a a team that is most in form in the world the IPL is probably the the, the pinnacle of all of that wouldn't you say see how granny goes absolutely can't wait yeah absolutely Mumbai and (laughs) 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 see granny play like his three games (laughs) he's going to play for Mumbai that's right granny going to sort of start up top and (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Alex thanks (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much 
to Alex for his time to come into the studio. Um, let's talk about the BBL pairs. Oh, yeah, now we're talking. Um, okay, so I'm just looking at the table right off the top. Okay, most teams have played five games except for the Thunder that have played six. Stars have played – no, no, Hurricanes have played four. Um, and the Scorchers are top. They've won every game bar one. They're on eight. Then he goes Adelaide Strikers on six points. Renegades, six points. Sixes, six points. And the Thunder – on six points. And the Thunder have had a fucking wild tournament already. Bowled that for 15, lost three games in a row. Obviously, Beauty. Faruqi uh, had his contract ripped up. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, so there's been a bit going on over there. Obviously, uh, um, what's his name? Sanger dislocated his, uh, fractured his collarbone. So he's out now. Now Chris Green is the captain. Interesting enough, if Chris Green goes down, Warner's about to be played back for, uh, Warner's about to <laughs> want to come back for the for the Thunder for a few games. So, uh, nah, but it's all good. He he's going to have to play under Ollie Davies. He should never captain again because, um, because you know, they fucked it up so hard the first time. Just got to defend those battle lines. Um so that's what's that's that's a broad picture. Uh, there was a fucking great game that uh, the other night when when uh, it was the Heat against the Renegades and Nisa took a wicket off the first ball. He ended up taking four five. Took a hat trick as well. Yep. But then Dre Russ hit some of the cleanest sixes that I've seen in this competition in a hot minute, okay. and he finished with fifty something on out. And they got over the Renegades got over the line in the end. So Nisa hat trick in a losing side that's got to feel good first and foremost. Mm-hmm. He was also released from the Test squad that day, so he's coming and just taking a hat trick. Pretty fucking good. Um, uh, the Scorchy, the Scorchies, Scorchies made 200 against the Stars of the Junction. Did you go to that game? I did. I was going to talk about it. Okay. Uh, and uh, the other thing I picked up was uh, Rashid Card sledging Ashton Turner in Perth. Oh, what did he say? I, I couldn't really tell. Couldn't tell. It was just, like, it was like bowling. He bowled three dot balls in a row, and he like kept bowling him. Ashton was just like just blocking him, and then Rashid Card just like kept walking down the wicket and talking at him. Never Shit. seen Rashid Rashid Khan do that before. We'll talk to Matt Short about that. Playing the same team, obviously. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, and so Ashton Turner, surprising recipient of that. Like we, we had hey, him at our live show, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Maybe he's got a level, but he wasn't even saying anything back to him. Mm. I think he was a bit bemused. I don't know. <laughs> and that's the Big Bash 2022, 2023. What do you want to talk about with the Big Bash? Oh, I went to a game. Yeah, uh, I took a my, good game as well. Was it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yellow uh, versus green. Well, the, the Stars were playing the Scorchers at Junction Oval. Orange, and it was they? a uh, – sorry, you're right. Green, green v. Orange. Green v. Orange. At uh, Junction Oval of an afternoon. It was 3.30 in the afternoon. Lovely day. I thought, oh, my, my, my eldest boy's four and a half. I'm going to give him a crack at this. It's, okay. It's too young. And uh, okay. he's too young, but we'll give it a crack. Okay. And um, – and then my wife said she'll come out. I'm like, oh, here we go. This will be good. Beauty. Uh, and my and my two and a half year old. And uh, we we had a fun time. We lasted about forty five minutes. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. But you know, we found a spot on the on the grass there, and uh, my boys were just fucking around with a KFC a bucket. Bucket, you know, on, on, the bucket head, on the lid. On the head. Bucket so, on the bonce. So that's probably a good result for the BBL. <laughs> bucket on the bonce. Yeah. Uh, yep. Peter Hatzaglu spotted. Spotted me and said hello. Okay. And so I took my eldest over. Like, uh, mm-hmm. I said, oh, look, this is one of the players, Pete. Yeah. That's a glue. Oh, he didn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With respect, Pete, if yeah. you're listening. Um, you were there. Like you most, saw it. Most, most of Pete's teammates. Yeah. No, he actually said, oh, genuinely, <laughs> he was love. I mean, Pete has a glue. He's one of the nicest guys. He's a nice guy. He's such a good guy. And he actually said, um, this is true. Like, they were just about to go out in the field. And he said, um, he goes, oh, your dad's a good bat. Uh, I'm just really it's, it's the truth yeah. that's what he said yeah, yeah. Oh, boy did not give a shit yeah. Yeah, so I'm the one who lost that out of that okay and then my boy left and uh, he got the fuck out of there yeah and then Hatsaglu went up to Faf yeah. and pointed me out yeah, right um, okay and then I didn't know what to do because I'm like if I stand there like looking as he's pointing him out it looks like I've just sort of come to like wave it at Faf. Yeah. So I sort of started like looking around a little bit yeah. like, oh yeah, g'day. Yeah. 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 Sort of shuckers it. And then he was like, what's this? <laughs> and, Before uh, I promoted my book, I don't know you guys yeah, anymore. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, and then and then there was some um, fireworks that went off a couple of times in, in the day. So yeah. sort of- you, And you it was a really great see, afternoon. Yeah, it was a great afternoon, but some fireworks were going off and my two and a half year old was- uh, genuinely frightened and has continued to talk about that. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, the, so the, the, scary, the scary fireworks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I probably, yeah, two and a half is probably a bit young, for, a bit the, young. for the old BBL there. Okay. But I'll tell you what, it was a lovely day out of Junction and it was packed. It was a nice kind of atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if like playing at a more of a suburban boutique ground is seen as a, like a, a climb down for the BBL, but I thought it works really well. And in terms of the game, which I haven't spoken about at all, uh, Faf 
went ballistic. Yeah, I just missed something. it. Mm. Uh, but then Josh Inglis batted beautifully. Mm -hmm. he, he looked incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, so I got to see a bit of that and then we're out of there. Now it's a little bit the, so I can't remember the exact figures for the, the Boxing Day Test match, for instance, but it was in the hundreds of thousands, in the low hundred thousands of attendances over three days. Right. So first day was 65. Second day when it was 38 degrees was 42,000 people. That is fucking unbelievable, given mm. how hot it was mm. on day two. And then the third day, I can't remember, but it was anyway, so you're looking at like the mid 100 thousands. I think that was the official figures after three days. Now, like, that's packing out almost every ground in England, I think, for every single day. You know, so it's just that there is an optic to sports stadia in Australia. Mm. Where our population is like, broadly quite a small population, but mm. we have this obsession with, like, making these monstrous college mm. football stadium stadiums with, that hold 100,000 people, which feel, is filled out once a year. Yeah. But it looks fucking great that one day a year. Yeah, you know, Perth stadiums like that as well. Now, Perth, obviously, if Perth had, like, the Boxing Day Test or the New Year's Test match, many, many, many more people would go, exactly. as was happened with the Gabba when usually they, they get the first test of the season. So like it's December, people are still at work. Why the fuck would you go to the cricket on a Wednesday afternoon, etc.? I'll call those things. Um, so the Gabba this year had their day, day one was the week before Christmas and it was on the Saturday. So first two days, Saturday, Sunday, I'm, I'm going to that, I'm watching, right? But like, so the big bash, if you get like 10,000 people at a, at a, you know, at a grade ground for lack of a better term, although the, yeah, they, they play a lot of professional matches there. It just looks good, and then it feels it fills with this consumer confidence. Like, yeah, people care about this. But when like fifteen thousand people turned up to um, the Etihad uh, or the Empty Had, Empty Had, <laughs> uh, or Marvel Stadium, um, uh, or the MCG, it's like, well, no one's there. But it's like, but still, actually, quite a few people go, and like the, all the television uh, attendances are really good. Like per game, I believe. Per, what, what's the stat per game? More people watch the Big Bash than any other league in Australia. Is that right? I don't know. I, I do see that uh, line yeah, from, bandied cricket, about. From, from Cricket Australia officials. So, like, but that is the thing. So, like, it feels like, you know, oh, in fact, this thing with, like, the tennis was generally just like, oh, I, think, I think it's all going pretty good, like, in terms of interest in it. But there's something underneath it's like, it's not. And I'm trying, I'm just trying to, like, nail down. And I think it's because so people is are off the players. <laughs> so it's once again, it's Cummins' role in the Atlanta not sponsorship issue. Hard enough. <laughs> you can't win by an innings in 182, and for me to respect your team. Yeah, it's um, it's the sniff test. Yes, you know, it's the sniff test, yeah. the pub test, the man next door test. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, um, it's the man next door test. Yeah, that's right. The AFP used that. <laughs> <laughs> the sniff test, you know, like how um. You know, Cricket Australia executive who's leading the rights deal is also, um, you know, is, is, is also on the payroll of a, of a News Corp subsidiary business. <laughs> yeah. That's all good. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. probably fine per some code or whatever, but just is it is it passing a sniff test? Mm. Don't know. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, look, personally, I don't like... I don't know. This whole this whole existential question at the moment is about how to protect the Australian summer, how to yeah, make the Australian right, right. summer thrive. Because the Australian summer is a very discreet, bespoke thing. Like we just have, we probably have four weeks in the year where Australians really want to fixate and focus on the cricket. Where you can even open a Melbourne newspaper, the back mm. page, and it will be about cricket. Mm. You know, like that. Yeah, that's yeah. Th there's probably four, maybe two weeks per year, three weeks where mm. that happens. Mm. And so what? we do at the moment is we put all of our best cricket together and mix it up and uh it's not really working anymore because other countries don't want to take part in that as much as they used to it's hard so, as, so what do you do it's hard as well where like test cricket is just it's such a beautiful pastime and it is a pastime it's not like this fucking money making commercial operation where like mm. you have to be engaged in every ball like nah. the trades in and out stuff like mm. the amount of tests this 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 summer that I've watched so far, all of them obviously have been to the grounds, mm. luckily enough. But then there's just some times where I'm like, I'm just fucking napping on the couch yeah. and it's just background. Not yeah. it, and it's just like, I can. It's the worst it's business model sort of all just time. wafts over me in this like, and it's hot mm. outside. And I really love that part of cricket, you mm. know, but it's not, but it's not this like commercially driven operation where it's like, it's just going to fuck you in the face with as many games as possible. High turnover, mm. action, action, action. Oh yeah. R&B music, days. fireworks. Put this Doesn't on for, work. Put this on for five days, all day, pay for it all. Yeah. And, so that I can walk in and out of it on occasion in between my fucking sleep. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, that's what we're asking. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, I think one of the big elephants in the room is uh, like in the 15 or so years that T20 cricket has existed mm. properly, uh, I think there's a fair amount of evidence to suggest that our country in particular ain't that big on it. Yeah. And uh, it'd be worth 
investigating the reasons why. But mm. I, I think that's a real concern. Like if you if people accept that the BCCI are going to um, drive cricket around that format, mm-hmm. which the IPL provides evidence as yes, that's happening. Then how does it square that our country ain't that into it? You know. Yeah, can, can I share my experience of the Big Bash with you, mate? Because it's obviously my job to be across the cricket, mm-hmm. right? And I, for the first part of the Big Bash, I was watching the games and I was like really into it. I was like, I, I'm looking at the teams. There are fucking this some, year, yeah, even this, this season, year, this okay. year. And I was like, I'm making a real concerted effort because I was like, I don't want to like come on here and be like, ah, whatever. But it's already got to the point where like, obviously it's part of our job as well. We go to the games and we're touring and you know, whatever, but it gets to the end of the day and I've watched like the cricket all day. And I just, I feel like I'm a better person by living a deeper life than just watching cricket for literally 12 hours a day. It's, it's just, it's too much. And I just, it comes this, this is just my experience and it's probably wrong because I have a responsibility to talk to people who like, who, who don't watch it as much as what we do to be able to present something that's interesting about this is happening in the cricket. And I understand that. The people who are listening are going, I'm, I'm going to switch to another podcast where <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's heaps of podcasts out there where they fucking watch every ball. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It's up to you, you know? I'm looking forward to the Manscaped read this yeah. week. That's all, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's just like it, it, it comes to this idea where like how can you have the national team playing at the same time as like this very important competition, which is still good, but it's, it's just fucking – it's too much for me. It's too much. I want to spend time with my partner. I want to see my friends. Uh, you know, <laughs> I want to think about my manscape reads. Mm. Um, so like just for me, it's just so much. But like I look at like some of the games, the highlights, and good things are happening. But I just find it very difficult to stay across. And I mm. also wonder – how many people who like go to the games and like and even watching the test matches and that's still the central tenant of their cricketing experience for the summer get to the end of the night it's like okay it's purple versus red I watch a little bit and it's like I'm not like does anyone really care who wins the big bash that's a, that's a genuine serious question mm. do people really I mean the, the players do definitely mm. of course they do but do the broadcasters do the advertisers do the people who go to the games they're obviously like a, a very strong supporting like that memberships for all the franchises or the clubs or whatever. I just, I don't know. I just, I'm, I've, got, I get to this point of the year all the time where I'm like, oh, fuck, big bash. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's just, oh, who's playing? I don't. Oh, just. And that's, that's just my, that's my experience. It's my experience of it. Thoughts? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I, I think heaps of people are in the same boat as that, right? You know. But I also think that, I was, I'm not sure if there was a magical time in the past, you know, pre-internet, pre-T20 cricket, where like everyone watched every ball of the test match or mm-hmm. whatever. It was riveted by every single ball. I think cricket's always been this strange, abstract game where you come in and out of it. And Yeah. Uh, but T20 and cricket's not like that. You have no, to that, watch it. Yeah, that's like right. To, uh, like watch it, watch yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's always been complicated to try and um, package this strange game that emanated out of English people trying to teach others how to live <laughs> like, into... 2022 fucking <laughs> entertainment principles that competes against TikTok. You know, the yeah. WG Grace yeah. like, wasn't thinking about TikTok when he was sort of saying, oh, I'm going to have a stick here because yeah. people got, you know, yeah. uh, that would be good. But um, WG you, Grace of the Fitzroy garage session. <laughs> I've got long beards. I, I just think um, we tried to get Todd Greenberg on the show this week because he made some comments about, you know, about some more existential issues with this and mm. we might speak to him next week. Mm. I do think that I do think it would be very foolish for Cricket Australia to um, believe that the status quo is okay. Yeah. You know? Uh, oh. Because I think everyone can – as much as we might like our cricket, and we, we all like it. We, we still like, like it being it. on and yeah. hundreds and m- montages and stuff. But uh, – and maybe that's – maybe it's just okay, – maybe just cricket doesn't have to be awesome all the time. Mm. But I do think that doing nothing is going to expedite deeper problems later. Uh, I, I think some kind of some kind of strategic uh, uh, reset. I don't know what it is. Strategic decision, bold strategic decision is going to be made. Like, are we going to try and surf this T Twenty wave properly? Mm. Because that's where everyone else in the world is going. Look at South Africa. Look at Trent Bolt, New Zealand. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's happening. Mm-hmm. Are we going to try and surf that wave and be really good at that? And we're going to make hard decisions mm. to ensure that we're at the forefront of the game, so that can continue to thrive here and we can be at the forefront of what's happening globally or are we going to fight really hard to hang on to test cricket because ultimately that's what our country wants that's the heartbeat of cricket here red Mm. ball cricket Mm. and we're going to form the alliances that you need to form Mm. to continue to protect it to push back against that uh i I think doing 
doing something in the middle is um, is just kicking the can down the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And we're yeah. going to continue to have these summers where only one test team can give us a game out here and we're not even going to be that good at T20 cricket and when we host a World Cup, no one really goes. Yeah. And I just think Australia will just slide down and the in, the interest here will, will, will wane a little bit. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if that's Mate, too No, no, no. I think that's really well said and I, I agree with that. The more I think about it, the more I think that the Big Bash has to be like a central tenant of the Australian summer and not – Test matches. I mean, fuck, even the Ashes out here is so it's shit. It's tough to see. It's easy it's, to say, though, isn't it? It's easy to say, easy for us to say, like... Oh, of course it is, yeah, you yeah. Know, would you put yourself in the hot seat and be the person who goes, like, you know what, Boxing Day, New Year's, that's yeah. fucking big bash time now, yeah. and Pat Cummins is playing that, yeah. and that's what we want kids to aspire to be. Like, you want to, mm. you know, you you want to play for the Sydney Sixers, you want to play yeah. for the Melbourne Stars, like, it's like you want to play for Manchester United, you want club, yeah. like, club is going to be mm. where people's mentalities is directed towards, uh, and we'll, we'll carve out a couple of international windows for some Civil War reenactments <laughs> for, for the old for the old cuts like us to enjoy every so often. And remember, Civil the, War reenactment. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, um, all right. right well, to get through here. well, to that to that mold, uh, we're going to talk about the IPL auction in a moment's time. But uh, we are going to talk to Matt Short right now. Before we do, Pez, we got to thank Budgie Smuggler for supporting TGC over the years. They've been. Uh, one of the all-time supporters of TGC to make it even this far for now us. Jump on budgiesmuggler.com, check out the TGC collection. Uh, got a whole bunch of stuff in there, tiger print, budgies, some indigenous art there as well. I think we've got the lightning stri- the, the old uh, the, the lightning Guernsey uh, ODI team from 1992-93. Fuck uh, yeah, as, that's as, my favourite. As, as a set of smugglers. That's yeah, my number one. Mate, uh, that's my number um, one. I'll make them uh, no, no, no. <laughs> and you can be like us who haven't worn them yet. Uh, this sort of packet, but <laughs> um, we also had. Uh, yeah, I think it might be gone now. But uh, to celebrate Warner's double, mm. they were offering twenty percent off site wide using the code U Beauty. But I'm just saying that even though it's over now. Yeah. Um, so Budgie just to c- continuing to kick goals. It's uh, it's it's exactly where you need to land for summer. Uh, this interview is brought to you by TJ. Uh, sorry, TGC T Twenty Stars. Well, in many ways, it is brought to you by TGC. Yeah, TGC Stars. Uh, <laughs> now the website's not tjcstars.com, It's t20stars.com. Okay, it's global. Use the code TGC. TGC <laughs> oh my god, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Anytime you go on the internet, it's just like just using a website like that. Mm-hmm. Well, that could be porn. <laughs> exactly. How could this be relevant <laughs> yeah, to being yeah, porn? Yeah. Oh, I see how you JesusChristSuperstar.com. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, he's not like that, is he? On the cross. My God. At T20Stars.com, use the code TGC15 for 15% off the full T20 Stars range. Do you reckon blokes are just throwing out kit at the moment, just being like, this this bat doesn't work for me anymore? Well, if that's the case, mm. go to T20Stars.com, get yourself some new kit. We had a we had a, uh, a message last week about a guy who his brother had scored his first 100 after not beginning, uh, being able to score over 20 or 15 mm. or some shit. Yep. Um, now he's scoring hundreds, and that's definitely down to your kit, T20Stars.com. Use the code TJC15 at that website for 15% off the full T20 Stars range. Here he is. Here's Matt Short. So pleased to be joined for the first time on the grade cricketer by Matt Short. Matt Short, stalwart of Victorian cricket. He's with the Adelaide Strikers. I think he's top of the BBL run scoring charts as well as of at least two days ago. But I'm sure he can let us know if he's still if he's still a top and wearing that coloured hat. Uh, Shorty, if I can call you that, welcome to TJC. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I don't think I'm on top anymore, but yeah, maybe top five. <laughs> oh, well, we'll just say we recorded this a few days ago and, and he was top. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I love this scene, uh, Matt, because it's like this time of year when we talk to a couple of the BBL guys and you're all just in like hotels, uh, you know, and like just a uh, like a, a sort of a random hotel. Where where have we caught you today? Like, are you, are you at home? Are you traveling around? Where are you at? Yeah, no, you're right. See, the I'm here in, in Adelaide at the moment. Yeah, just the the team hotel. Um, we've got the big New Year's Eve game coming up. So, um, no, you've caught me at a good time either in the hotel at the ground or down the beach. So, um, no, I had a good time now. I want to ask, like, like Adelaide, you guys are having a good season this year. I think you're second now, um, three three and two. Always a fun gig uh, at Adelaide, it seems. But like. T20 cricket seems to be getting so specialised. Everyone's talking about execution. There's fielding. The guys are whacking it. There's levers. There's all sorts of different skills knocking around. Like it seems like the edge that any team can have is with the vibe of the side and the yeah. fun that they're having. And I look around Adelaide Strikers, you, you, Dizzy's coach, and they got Harry Conway and Wes Agar. Uh, like, is is it a good vibe at the Adelaide Strikers? Can you run us through it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've got a guy called Rashid Khan as well, so that helps. Um, oh, yeah. But no, yeah, you're right. Harry Conway is he's the man. Um, mm. 
he's he's you know unfortunately he's not playing at the moment. Um, I'm sure his time will come, but yeah, having him around the group, um, oh yeah, it's huge for yeah not only the vibe but um, it just, yeah, just gets the boys up and about. Uh, he's awesome having the change rooms, but um, yeah, good start for the lads. Um, but yeah, Harry Conway's the man. I know he, I know he's done a couple of podcasts for you guys, I think. So um, no, he's a ripper. Well, you you obviously got uh, Colin DeGron home there as well. Now, Colin is uh, he's very quiet. He's obviously a proud uh, you know African man. He obviously played a lot of cricket for Zimbabwe as uh, for uh, for for New Zealand as well. But I just want to know what his uh, what his sort of uh, observations are of you know the beast Chris Lynn or any of Peter Siddle's sunglasses. <laughs> he's a very sort of down to earth kind of guy, and nothing yeah. really phases him too much. So, um, no, he sort of lets Lenny do his own thing, but. Um, yeah, I can't see him wearing Sidney's <laughs> Sidney's sunnies anytime soon. He's uh no, nah, he's a good character. He's a very quiet, sort of humble guy. So um, you know, anything outlandish like Sidney, I don't think he'll he'll go anywhere near that. <laughs> about your own cricket, Matt. Like uh you I'm I'm just looking at the Adelaide Strikers. You you open the batting, uh, you open the bowling, you field at first slip. Um, you're obviously a very good cricketer, but do you have something on Dizzy uh being able to do those things? <laughs> No, nah, nothing at all. Um, you know, when I first moved to Adelaide, I was sort of stuck in the middle order and um, was going pretty shit house, to be honest. Um, and then, you know, I was sort of nagging at Dizzy for a couple of years there, you know, like I'm I'm probably more suited to, to open the batting. And um, I reckon, I was thinking about this earlier, I reckon the one thing that helped me most was, you know, Tim Payne, that, all that saga and, you know, pushing Kez into the test side. So Kez was opening the batting for the strikers at the time. And um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, all that Tim Payne shit happened and Kez got the call up and then I went in to open the batting. So, um, yeah, probably not so much dizzy, but, yeah, thanks to, to Timmy Payne, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> no one talks about the good news exactly. out of that saga. No one talks about the good guys, the, the winners out of that scenario, you know? Um, that's, uh, you, you mentioned Rashid Khan before. Now, I've never seen this from Rashid, but um, he got a little bit got a little bit lippy with Ashton Turner the other night. He was getting, he was getting booze from, uh, from, from, the, from the Perth faithful. I couldn't really make out what he was saying, but, like, what was what was that about? It's a weird one, like, because I reckon Rashid's had the edge over, over AT for a while now. Um, you know, he's got him out a lot of times, and... I think when guys start to get on top of Rash a little bit, you know, he starts to to chirp up and try and sort of play with him a bit that way. So, um, yeah, AT definitely had the edge over us the other night and, you know, Rash couldn't get him, nor none of us could. Um, so he gets a bit frustrated when he can't take a wicket and sort of, yeah, goes a bit verbal at the batters. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. You're Matt, you're like you're you're a tall bloke, and that's always uh advantage. That's always an advantage in sport. But like I'm short as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You bowl like some high class offies up the top of the innings. Uh you whack them, you top five bat in the IP in the uh, in the BBL. Someone's told me that they think you're one of the top three fielders in the country and best slipper they've ever seen. I won't say who. Um <laughs> could you do, do you think you could do a job for the nation? Uh if you if you were called up? Oh. Uh, geez, I don't know about some of those words, but um, oh, look, if the time came, um, you know, obviously the last couple of years have been been really good to be able to contribute, you know, not with the bat, but um, you know, if I miss out with the runs, it's it's trying to help the boys with the ball. So, um, yeah, obviously playing for Australia would be would be unreal. Um, in you know whether it's open the batting or you know with the ball, but um, obviously sort of trying to take care of what I can at the moment with the strikers and then obviously see what happens after that. Just on that, like, do you have like, uh, what, what are your like immediate goals with the BBL? I'm not, let me just asking about you specifically because we're talking right now, but, um, but obviously like everyone wants to play for Australia, right? Like including me, uh, I'm not actually playing anymore, but you know, I still feel like I could like, do a job for somewhere. <laughs> um, but uh, like, like, is it, is it, is that the goal of, you know, a big bash season? Like if you had, a, if you had a monster season, you can get yourself in the conversation, you know, someone call you a bit of a bolter or an outsider or a dark horse or whatever, or is it, uh, do you have sort of more ambitions of like, well, if I have a really good season here, then maybe I got picked up in a different, uh, a different tournament, you know, one of the uh, Abu Dhabi leagues or, you know, maybe in South Africa or what is that? Or, or are you more focused on the right here and now of like, okay, yeah, I've got to win the game on New Year's Eve and I want to win the tournament. Like, do, do you have a, a clear goal of of what a big bash uh, season can do for you? Yeah, it's a good question. I think there's a a couple of ways I'm sort of thinking of it. Um, 
especially like the way the tournament is now is game after game. It's sort of focused on, you know, each game coming up. But mm. I think coming off last year, off a, a pretty successful year with the bat, um, it was more about being consistent again this year and trying to build off that year. And mm. um, I think obviously to play for Australia, it's probably, you know, it's either about timing. And I know there's a, a few gaps that might open up with the, the white ball side coming up. So yeah, mm. um, I don't think, you know, I don't think one big bash series or comp will, will get you in that. It's more about, you know, building two or three seasons together and um, being consistent. So I think that was a big focus coming into this year was trying to build off last year and, um, you know, go go a few better this year and um, and then, yeah, sort of go from there and hopefully, yeah, get the name back in the, or not back, but into the selectors' minds. Mm. And you also play Red Bull for Victoria as well, and you do a really good job there. Like you're extremely versatile uh, as your career matures. Do you do you feel like you're gonna have to pick one, uh, or or do you are you really focused on trying to be valuable across all? And like, can that actually work? Like, can that complement each other, or do you feel like if you really want to take another step, you're gonna have to pick one and stick with it? Yeah, look, it's a, another really good question. I think. At the moment, especially the last couple of years, I've sort of just been focusing on, you know, whatever game or whatever the format is, is just trying to adapt as well as I can and and contribute with, you know, whatever it is. So, um, but yeah, it definitely crosses your mind that, you know, you have a couple of good seasons in the in the T20 and, um, you know, you look at all the guys and some of your teammates like Linny and Rash, you know, they go around the world and mm. and and play, you know, the, the fun style of cricket, they call it. So, um it definitely crosses your mind and um, yeah. So at the moment I'm sort of arming and arming about, you know, what the future holds and whatnot, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that'll all sort of figure itself out. Cause you've been, you've been in the, in the system, so to speak for a while, like uh, you played Aussie 19s, right? That must've been eight or nine years ago or something. Who was, who was in your alumni uh, for the Aussie 19s in that world cup? Um, yeah, we had a few big, uh, Billy Stanlake, Benny McDermott, um, who else? We got Jakey Doran. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Um, you know, guys like Alex Gregory, um, Cameron Valenti. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so there's a few. There's probably about, maybe about half the guys that are still still around now. Yeah, mm. it's pretty good. It's pretty good that, that many have pushed on because a lot of the guys you see under 19s, like obviously to make it that level, you've got to be an amazing talent to to make it. But then you look at some of the names of old scorecards, and it's like maybe one or two might push on yep. to play shield cricket or, or even big bash cricket, I suppose these days, but to have like sort of half that team still, still, still knocking about in the system, it's uh it's obviously a pretty good squad. Yeah. That's the thing. Obviously Billy Stanlake and, and Benny McDermott have, you know, played for, for the Aussies and um, yeah, it goes to show that, you know, it's not, even, not, you know, not, um, not that far away, you know, if you, if you keep sticking at it and um, mm. see what happens. Mm. I know you got to get to training, man. So one last question from me and a very important question, like how shit has the decks been? Uh, the BBL? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, look, playing here at Adelaide Oval um, is bloody unbelievable. Like it's probably the best ground to, to bat at. Um, but yeah, we get to, to wickets out at, in Sydney, out at West Sydney there um, at the showgrounds. That's it's pretty, pretty grim out there, let alone, you know, trying to, trying to make runs on that wicket. Um, mm. Yeah, they have been. I suppose with all the rain we've had around and a lot of the squares and wicket tails are, are looking pretty dodgy at the moment. But um, yeah, hopefully come Jan in the new year, we'll, uh, we'll see some better wickets. It's obviously been a remarkable achievement though for you to get yourself into the top five run scorers playing on such shit decks. So mm. uh, so congratulations <laughs> on that. <laughs> nah, thank you. It's, uh, it's been a bit of a struggle, but uh, <laughs> see what we can do. <laughs> I hope you're not referring to this interview. Uh, but... Um... <laughs> Matt, th- thanks so much for joining us. We'll let you get to training, mate. Um, all the best for the rest of the season and everything beyond. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, Amy. Thank you very much to Matt Short. Uh, the IPL auction pairs. This is the one. This is the one that the fans really want to know about. So let's talk about Cam Grain going for three point one five million to the Mumbai Indians. That's two point one million dollars USD. 
Uh, Jai Richardson was also picked up by Mumbai for 180k. But uh, but Cam Green, uh, Cam, I'm sure Jai Richardson who scored <laughs> heaps of like, great T20 performances behind, yeah. him, especially playing the IPL before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Um, He's the best player at the best team in the BBL. Cam Green, though, two games against India, whack whack, three point one five, job done. <laughs> These two meters. No, it's, I mean Delhi wanted him as well. Delhi wanted for three him. mil. We'll talk to punter about that mm. uh, at the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, I mean, what do you, what can you say? It's the full package. I think more. Mumbai, M- Mumbai, like that's this is a lifetime buy. This is a fucking asset. This, right. is, this is years. You know, this mm. is this is eight years, ten years. He <laughs> probably won't even play that many games. Uh, but yeah, well, that's it, what they're saying, right? He might, he might be necessarily a starter. I yeah. mean, must be but nice. You know, possessions nine tenths of the law. Well, I don't yeah. know, I've heard someone say that. I really yeah. understand. Yeah, it's a football thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've I've seen plenty of football teams win with it, a lot of possession. It, it, Mourinho <laughs> teams, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the same as the IPL. Now it is interesting, Pez, with uh, with Cam Green because. He's obviously got an enormous year coming up. He'll be touring India uh, for the Australian test side. Then he'll go to the IPL. Then he'll go to the Ashes. But will hopefully be a, a, a World Test Championship in there as well. Uh, and then there's a 50-over World Cup, which I'll just mostly be sniffing about in for a squad. That's yeah, be it. sniffing in. Um, and then, of course, another summer. So it's an enormous workload. And I just felt like he had to get himself into this auction because there was always going to be interest after what he did in two games in India. It, just, it, it honestly is remarkable that like that we are as big advocates for cam grain as anyone else two meters bats bowls catches it's fucking buckets it's everything like this is guys a mercurial talent not a mercurial talent he's just an enormous talent Mm. in more ways than one but uh but it's just this is purely it just feels like this is purely off two scores in india where he was opening the batting one of the easier times two score runs apparently in in, Mm. uh, in 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 short form cricket and it was just slogging and it came off. Mm. It was, it was good execution. Let's, let's be right about that. But um, there is absolutely no um, other sort of evidence about him batting in the middle order, especially or mm. taking, or taking important overs uh, for. It's investment. I it mean, really investment. Like, uh, but then you figure like a guy, this good can figure it out, but it's just like that amount of money is. Yeah. But the package wow. is unbelievable. And that's, and that's before you get to what he can do in cricket. But uh <laughs> Yeah, also, Red Bull, Red Bull sponsorships, that's got to play a part. Speaking of a couple of people behind the uh, behind the scenes there. Like, oh, okay. a, bit of, a bit of an ITK stuff, yeah, is it? Yeah, ITK stuff. <laughs> I think there's a fair acknowledgement that uh, it's you're, you're buying for some reward later, you know, three years down the track, four years. I mean, look at the guy. Like, he's he's barely he's, – he's so – he's like – he's still, he's still, like, he's still like Bambi on ice. Like, uh, mm. he's, he's taking fifers and hitting 50s and taking cr- catches left, right, yeah. and centre, buying 140s and – I don't even get the impression he's got any personal swagger or like uh, it doesn't even come across to me like he feels like he fits in. Yeah, you know? I like, agree with like, that, yeah. What, what, what's he going to do when he actually, yeah. you know, a couple of birds knocking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm being silly. A couple of cars obviously, all of a sudden. Yeah. Obviously, obviously being silly, but, you know, when he starts to really like mm. like tap into his own mm. um, abilities, mm-hmm. and I think that's probably what they're buying him for. They just know it's like how, how can it not um, – just absolutely fly. In How a couple can he of fig- time. figure it out? He's going to figure yeah. it out, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, and he's, that, if he hasn't figured it out and he's still able to do some incredible stuff, yeah. like that, those, I think that's probably, that's the value of those two knocks. It's just like, oh, because it was a bit, it was sort of a bit violent that those two knocks was like a mm-hmm. bit of Cam Green violence. I'm mm-hmm. liking this. Like, otherwise, he's always very sort of mm-hmm. within the, the, the corridor of wet paint when he bowls and yep. bats, everything's straight. It's ball machine. It's, yep. it's all nice and uh, nice and neat. Yep. And just in those two games on Indian soil against their best players, it was like he was, he was destroying them. Yeah. Uh, wild, wild stuff. But they they have a look at that and they're like, look, look, this could be anything. Must must be in our possession now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just looking at the Mumbai team. Hang on, let me yeah, just not let a me, bad let me, squad. Let me just get it up. So mm. Robert Sharma opening the batting with Ishan Kishan. Then you got like then you got Sui Kamayadav. Yeah, he's pretty he's, good. He's the best in the world. Tim David's in that squad. Oh. Uh, Deval Brevis. Oh. Um, they got Jofra, who, yeah. who, who should be mm. fit there, and Bumrah. I mean that's that's not there obviously one to eleven, but there's a, there's a couple of players. Who's, who's uh, tweaking? I'm actually not sure well, who that tweaker is, uh, but Cam Green will probably do a job there. Mm. I'm not sure who that's roll his is. fingers over the ball. Shakeen, is he a spinner? I, I'm, I'm not sure. Exactly. I'm not sure. Um, I saw Joffre bowl some leggies in Tassie grade cricket. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Did he, that, that he bowl a, some of that was the, the Hurricanes as well? 
Did he? Yeah, Jesus. There's a, there's a, there's a clip from a couple of years ago before anyone in Australia recognised Joffre. You know, yeah. again, Aussie. Aussie yeah, yeah, of uh, course. Yeah, yeah. Emu stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Aussie <laughs> emu stuff, yep. And he's he's playing great cricket and he like, he's bowling leggies and then he just decides off a leg spin yep. run up to just um, roll a scene, one out, seam up, yeah. and it like, it fucking flies. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so the point is he's quick. Um, Sam Curran was picked up for the most money ever in the IPL. He got picked up for 2.25 million USD. He's in Punjab. Uh, we're also Sakanda Raza, uh, the Zimbabwean player, was picked up there as well, just for 60K, but still it's his first time in the IPL, so it's a nice way. I think he even says nice way to finish my career, or like mm. it's an honour like, to, to have that mm. in my career as well. So anyway, Sam Curran, who was obviously player of the tournament and player of the World Cup final in the uh, in the T20 World Cup out here. Uh, nah, that's fucking value for money. Also, that so he's at uh, Punjab. I think it was actually, that was the first team that he was – uh, bought for in like oh, 20, 2017, 19 or something. He, he was at CSK, yeah. But I think he did actually start at, uh, at Punjab. Well, um, he was the he was the best player in the T Twenty World Cup. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Harry Brook also had a obviously World Cup winner. He got picked mm-hmm. up by the Sunrisers for one point six million. That's US. Um, Agarwal there is also gone to the Sunrisers. So Agarwal might be the captain there as well because that's probably because Kane Williamson has moved to the Gujarat Titans, who won the thing last year. Okay, two hundred and forty three. Okay. Right. Uh, Stokes at CSK for 1.98 million. He was at um he was at Rajasthan, wasn't he? Yeah. Yep. He didn't play last year. He opted out for last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but uh, Rajasthan, they were probably the team of the tournament last year, especially Stokes with Stokes and Donny is a good little combo just for, in terms of alpha stuff. Couple of alpha probably yeah. la- Donny's last year. We said that for the last five years. That's right. Uh, I suppose Stokes will will assume the leadership of that post Donny. You could you could True. scarcely ask for a, a higher yeah, profile and a, a higher star as far as leadership goes right now. That's pretty good. Than Stokes. That's pretty good. So speaking of Rajasthan, Jason Holder got bought there for 700k. Uh, Zampa uh, for 182. That was at his base price. That feels like a steal. So he'll be bowling with uh, Uzi Chahal. It's just that uh, foreign spinners barely get a game barely in the get IPL. A game. Yep. You know, Zampa's world class at that level, but there's just so many great, so many great local Indian spinners. Yep. It's just hard to get value there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Joe Root also picked up uh, by Rajasthan for 121k. Um, Delhi Capitals bought Riley Rousseau, okay. Phil Salt, and Manish Pandey. Um, right and then LSG. Did LSG – no, they got knocked out in the semis last year. Who did Goodrow beat in the final last year? Uh, I can't remember. Too much cricket. Anyway, LSG bought uh, Nikki Puran for 1.95 million, and the Australian uh, uh, Dan Sams got, got picked up there for LSG. So he's now played for – Dan Sams now played for three IPL teams, I think. He was at Mumbai last year. Where did he play before then? Somewhere Rajasthan else? were in the Rajas- final. Oh, Rajasthan <laughs> were they? Yeah, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> Not for me. Uh, anyway, so that's just uh, – and that wasn't even the major auction, but uh, a couple of blokes being picked up for cash. It's, 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 a bit it's, of bunts knocking about. A bit of bunts knocking about. The point is there's bunts. Yeah. Do you know what I find them interesting? Like, it's just uh, – it does feel like that is, that is like so, – it's so intrinsically linked, like the players and the money they go for, that it's like it's just an advertising tool for itself. It's just like, look, look what we can do. It's, it's a great flex. It's a great flex from the Indian Premier League. Mm. Like, look what we can do. Because, mm. like, it's just all these – like, the conversations aren't, aren't necessarily about, like, what squads line up well and who's, who's going to go where. It's about, like, look how much money these guys can get. Yeah. Isn't it? Like, the, like Cam Green's, like, that's way more than the highest uh, contract for Cricket Australia. 3.15 million, was it? Well, it just – again, you know, like, it, probably labouring the point too much. Like, or, or we're about to talk about Pakistan versus New Zealand. Right. And – uh they're, they're involved in a, you know, a nasty arm wrestle there in Karachi. You know? yeah. New Zealand's best bowlers knocking around at the junction, you yeah. know, for, for the stars. And like, Colin's uh, playing for Adelaide. Oh, and of course, yeah. Colin de Grano. Yeah. <laughs> How could I forget? Playing for the Cauliflower Blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, well, Pakistan versus New Zealand. Let's talk about that. So, Barbara Zahm scored some runs as well. It's actually been a good week for just guys getting runs again because obviously Warner got his 25th 100. Kane Williamson, I think, hit his 20, maybe 25th as well. He hit a double hundred, but Barbara Zum hit 161 uh, and Pakistan made 438 in the first innings. Um, Tim South, he led the way for the Kiwis with three for 69. And then New Zealand made 612 for nine. Uh, and Kane hit 200 red, Devin Conway 92, Tom Latham 113. So the top three made 113, 92 and 200. That was pretty good. Uh, Ish Sodi hit 65 down the order. Um, and then uh, who? And then Abra Ahmed who took five for two hundred and five off sixty seven point five. So bit of a bit of a slog, a bit of a slog over there in Karachi. And uh, the second innings <laughs> that was the end of day four, I think. Um, and then Pakistan find themselves seventy seven for two. Uh, so that's going into day five, and that is that is. Well, that's going to be a draw. Well, um, that's going to be a draw. <laughs> well, that's going to be a draw. Well, that's going to be a draw. And let's save this format. No. Um, yeah. Kane Williamson restrained celebration 
upon bringing up his hundred and his double, just worth noting. Uh, what for? Alex. Um, well, you know, just trying to pick up on some fucking periphery here. Okay. Uh, Alex Carey's was a restrained celebration as well. Yeah. This was nice to see. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, Kane, Kane brought up his double. He went to shake his teammate's hand right. first and then wave the bat. I don't know. I like it. You know, you want to see you want to see him go wild. You want him to fucking run out into the into the crowd and get crowd surfed. Yeah, I want to see him like lift his shirt up and have like a message underneath on a on a t shirt that he'd prepare before the game and then get yellow carded. Mm. That's what I want. About God, something about God. Yeah, yep. yeah. Or maybe like just run to the stump like a Tim Cahill style thing and just mm. do some boxing, something, mm. something like that. We've seen Stoinis and Chris Gale do the thing where they put the helmet on top of the bottom of the bat and lift the bat up like yeah. that, like it's, a, like it's a scarecrow. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Just ensure no crows come and peck them while they're um, <laughs> celebrating. Famous crow situation yeah, in Karachi. Yeah, that's right. they, crow's knocking about here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's actually you can ward off spider cam. And that's how they uh, keep touring the teams in away. Australia. Yeah. Well, we're talking about this off air as well. A couple of couple of easy things that cricket could do to um to bring the crowds back. Like I don't see stumps cartwheel anymore. Got yep. the raw dog. He might make his debut. Yep. What's the point of having a raw dog if you can't get a cartwheeling stump? They've changed the stump so that they just don't actually move out of the groove. Yeah. Uh, so that, that that's incorrect. Uh, yep. They need to, they need to change that. Yep. Um. <sighs> <laughs> just try, just try. Just uh, some you can't, you can't present these problems without solutions. Yeah, no, of course. You know, um, Jack wrote in via Patreon, mm. and he was talking about the Big Bash. He said, "Hey boys, I can't sleep. I'm thinking about Big Bash. What new gimmicks <laughs> could CA introduce to try prolong the inevitable IPL takeover? I hope there. I hope when there is a takeover, they sort of do it like WWE taking over WCW. That'd be funny. Anyways, here are some gimmicks I've been thinking about. A bat mm. that lights up. Since the BBL is so color themed for some reason, and once hit hard enough, everything has to be on fire or light up. Yep. Surprise! Some nonce hasn't already tried this somewhere, or maybe it's just me that thinks of this. I don't know. A KFC bucket that's huge, placed somewhere in the boundary. If you hit it." In the bucket, it's 10 runs, I suppose. Great for ad- advertising, probably. That's a KFC big bucket, 10 runs. Mm. That's that's how we're doing that. Um, that's all I have, unfortunately. But let me know your thoughts. I don't give a fuck, no shit about IPL. So it's a shame it's all going to be all cricket soon. Cheers, Jack. Yeah, there's something that they're not doing enough with buckets. Like all they're doing with buckets is putting them on, on your head. But buckets right. is, an, is an obvious correlation with mitts. Glory holes. Mitts, sorry. Yeah, mitts, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. How would yeah. you work it with a glory hole in cricket? You just go to a cubicle in the new renovated bathrooms at the SCG, for instance, and you just, just pop it all in there. <laughs> and what? <laughs> Get six runs. <laughs> and then how he goes, that's a KFC big bucket 10 or something. <laughs> so is it like um, if you're trying to incorporate a glory hole into the Big Bash yeah. as, a, as a KFC sponsor Not integration? Just the big bash. Oh, this, this could save Test Cricket. Yeah. What, like uh, if you make a certain amount of runs, you get to access the glory holes. Like, or is it a fan? Is it a fan activation? It's a fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fan activation. So, fan activation. so you go to the, you go to the. This is eighteen plus. You go to the yeah, bathroom. Yeah. This, this is one for the kids because we're going yeah. to bring some adults. There's going to be a bit of bunts brought into yeah. the game. Skip forward here if your children are in the car. Yeah. So you, <clears throat> you um, you go to the you bathrooms. go to the bathrooms. Yeah. Some in the bathroom there for you, Don. Yeah. There's one line for keys and there's yeah. one for holes. Okay. This is your this is how you get the crowds back to cricket. Yeah. Not there's So any you go to the bathrooms the moment, and there's cocaine and glory holes available. Right. Is it just one bathroom in the ground and the rest is for if people who just want to go do a whiz? No, no option. No. Oh, every <laughs> every bathroom, every men bathroom. and women, yep. in unisex yep. is is you 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 can only access yep. cocaine. Or <laughs> glory holes? Is that what you're saying? It's Obviously, been a, yes. It's been, it's, Obviously, yes. It's been a, a slow show so far. <laughs> okay, so and the glory yeah. hole is sponsored by KFC Big Bucket. <laughs> is that what you? Is that what you, Ian Higgins, are saying? I can't, this gets picked up by the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> no, it's like. <laughs> We're looking at a sponsorship with Winston recently. So many sponsorships are out the window. Fuck it. So I just need to get this right. You go in, the hole for the, the glory hole yeah. is actually is is KFC bucket themed. Yeah. It's the same size as a bucket of zingers. Yeah. And there's some bales that light up as yeah, well. Yeah, so what's the and then is there an action once you start using that KFC sponsored glory hole? Yeah. What happens? <laughs> What's at the other side, mate? Um, the other side is sponsored by a new 
uh, advertiser Fleshlight. Right. Oh. Yeah. So it is the integration of adult uh, content. Yep. We've seen this before. Have we? Yeah, I went there. The Cronulla Sharks were entertaining a sponsorship with um, oh, one um, of those uh, yeah, like, like brasses or like uh, <laughs> like like no, like like naughty is America that what you're or say something. Brasses, is it? Oh, is it brasses? Don't know. It's like, like, like one of those Premier League players. Yeah. You, don't to, you don't know how it comes out of your mouth. And this. You've never actually said it out loud. <laughs> You've read it. <laughs> So hang on, <laughs> hang on. The big is it Emray Chan or yeah. Can? Yeah. Or Khan? Yeah, that's right. Gakpo, is that how you say it? <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's interesting. Yeah. That's that's blue sky thinking. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong in brainstorming. Yeah. Anyway, that's Pakistan and New Zealand. Okay, hashtag RCGC uh, is brought to you by, well, man, let's talk about Manscaped first. But as you were saying, one of the highlights of the, of the year on Twitter just recently about... Um, Andrew Tate. Um, oh, yeah, sort absolutely of. Absolutely fucking dominated by Greta Thunberg. Right, yeah. Um, just, and him, she, sorry, her just saying like small dick energy. And like, yeah, there's an many, email address or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to go with the theme there of like just small dick energy. And like, one way you can improve that with is with the optical inch. Yeah. And you can use Manscaped. Use the code TJC for 20% off at manscaped.com. It always feels good. Like, you scape and your penis looks bigger. You just look, you look good. In, you, you like how you look in the mirror better than you did before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty, I mean, it's basic. It's yeah. a basic cell, but it speaks to some deep seated, like, biological needs and urges. Sure. And, and Manscaped can actually assist you with that. F- and you can get 20% off plus free shipping on those biological urges yep. uh, using the code TGC. Yep. Um, pretty sure you get 20% off like anyway, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're still pushing that out there. I mean, I've got some copy here, but it's, we, we've read it. It's just sexual female host stocking stuff a copy. Yeah. And we've already had uh, we've already had Christmas. Yeah. Um, but, but as it says, you know, trust me, ladies, Santa's cookies aren't the only thing you're going to want to get your hands on. <laughs> Have him join the other 7 million... I think it was bracket six million. Yeah, uh, other sexy lumberjacks who use Manscaped. They added a million people there really quickly. At Manscaped. Well, they might have been one of those ones where it was six point nine, but they mm. sort of they want to say seven because yeah. You know. Well, I, I mean, people will be uh, really gutted to hear that our contract with Manscaped is up. Um, this is our last read. We're gonna, I mean, I'll try, I'll try and renegotiate in the next twenty four hours. So we'll, mm. we'll find out next week if if they still want to have us. Yeah. Okay. But um. Well, we've given a really good red hot go this time. Yeah. Any last things you'd like to say about Manscaped just to just to get them over the line for the next one? Your cock looks bigger if you buy it. Hashtag RCDC is brought to you by Ponting Wines. Pontingwines.com.au. Use the code get a few. Use the code get a few at pontingwines.com.au. Um, should we just talk about one of the all time great TJC experiences we've had on this yeah. journey, Pez, yeah. by having Ricky Ponting of Ponting Wines um, on stage with us drinking we've Ponting got three Wines? Minutes to do this, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. What can you say? Ricky Ponting is probably the the largest uh, figure in cricket in Mm -hmm. the world at Mm -hmm. the moment. If you consider on-field achievements, uh, he's probably the best commentator knocking around, at least in Australia. And uh, he's so good at coaching that he's unaffordable to both Australia and India. Yeah, Uh, So it's a pretty good package. And for some reason he did our show and uh, he did not disappoint. That was about 50 minutes. I mean, if others want to write in and say their experience, I I just got the feeling it was – pretty enjoyed by people who were in there. Uh, it was absolutely heaving. It was fucking uh, unbelievable. 350 yeah. people standing up in the yeah. corner hotel, 100 yeah. seated. It was amazing. Uh, unbelievable scene. So uh, thank you very much for Ricky for joining us on stage. It's pontingwines.com.au. For your festive season, use the code get a few. All right. Hashtag ICDSC. Do you want to read? Do you want to read hashtag ICDSC? Yes. Uh, from Mitch. Hi, TGC. Uh, that's, uh, he's, he's talking about, uh, he's talking about uh, Ponting, Ponting Wines. Ponting Wines. Yeah. Oh, do you want to do that? We, oh, well, no, we'll get next one. We'll get next right. one. Um, sorry. Uh, go, ja- go, go, ja- Jason. Jason. Jason writes in. I used to play Play city and suburban cricket with Kerry the Skull O'Keefe for the Sydney University veterans in the late 80s and early 90s. And I'm sure he won't mind me telling you this story. The SU vets had a metronomic ability to score between 110 and 120 of their allotted 35 overs, whether they were none for 80 off 12 or 8 for 30 off 28. Average season win-loss was 50-50, most of the Ws coming when the Skull was in our midst. God only knows why he played with us. Anyway, one week he was batting at 5 or 6 and we were cruising at 2 or 3 for 
for about 100 off 20 and looking good to break 150 for the first time in three to four seasons. The sheds were calm. I was scoring along I was scoring along with our current New South Wales Chief Justice, who is a far better lawyer than he is a wicketkeeper. Awesome. Oh. Uh, and we were sharing our most embarrassing on-field moments as a bonding exercise, inverted commas. After the predictable tales of shelling sitters in front of prospective romantic conquests, <coughs> vomiting on the pop increase after working late, inverted commas, the night before, or handing the cap to the umpire, always an oppo player, never an official umpire in sight in those days, only to realise he was the bloke whose miso you'd put the hard word on at the pub the night before, it came round to Kerry. Right. His most embarrassing on-field moment, in commas again, he declared, was during the fourth 1971-2 unofficial test at the SCG. In his words, is the quote, I was seeing them like a football. I'd cruised to 20-odd and was facing Bish and Beatty. He tossed one up and I clipped it off the pads right out of the screws to the fence. But as I was strolling down the pitch to do a bit of gardening and see what Bish thought of my Greg Chapel-esque uh, on-drive, my Chapel-esque on-drive, sorry, I heard a noise behind me and it dawned on me that Gary Sobers, fielding at short leg had not only stopped it with his right hand but lobbed it back to the keeper who ran me out by about three yards at this point a wicket fell at St Paul's Oval and he was next in and off he went leaving all of us champed in stunned silence 25 years before anyone knew what it meant to be champed here he was pouring out his heart about his embarrassment at an incident that most of us would have and many probably still do masturbated to <laughs> for the rest of our lives <laughs> what a legend cheers fellas Jason <laughs> Well, it's just, uh, I suppose this story has just hit all the right notes. Uh, it's, it's about Kerry O'Keefe. It's called him the Skull, um, just to, you know, uh, convey some sort of, um, you know, convivial relationship between the two. It's Bish and Betty. It's, uh, it's Chapel. It's Gary Sobers. I mean, he's ticked a lot of boxes in sort of 1970, 1980. It's sort of done all the jobs there. Bit of Sydney Uni stuff, bit of law stuff, bit of, uh, bit of talking to the MISO, bit of, uh, bit of talking out women stuff. Um, this isn't really a question about anything, is it? It's just about like, here's the thing this that happened in, cr- in cricket for me. Yeah, and it was a good thing, and I want it said to many other people. I went to a cricket camp when I was like 13 or 14 that Kerry O'Keefe was uh, coaching at. Yeah. And the two things I remember are, um, one, uh, he could bowl fucking excellently. Uh, right. And I guess he, I'm guessing he would have been in his 50s or something at the time, but mm-hmm. he was rolling out flippers and shit right. like that. And then, yeah, he was telling stories, and it, it was the first time I'd heard the laugh, and it yeah. was it was incredible. Unbelievable. The 13th, like, see you later, Gaddy. Pete, I just want to say, Kerry O'Keefe, for a uh, combination of um, preparation, analysis, and humour, unrivaled uh, in Agreed. Australia, personally. Um, and, you know, he's got such extremity to his work that people in Australia are going to be like, oh, I don't quite, you know, that, that, that's this challenging me too much or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but of course. Uh, I think he's up there. And I think if they, like, if the rights did change, which doesn't appear they will, uh, he would be part of any commentary super team for me. I think he's fucking excellent. Thank you very much to Matt Shaw. Thank you very much to Alex Malcolm for coming in. Thank you much to you for listening to TGC throughout 2022. We'll be back next week for the first one of 2023 after the New Year's test match. Hashtag Ask TGC Fridays on Patreon and all the dailies at patreon.com forward slash If that's your sort of thing, see you later.